The following is a special presentation of ABC Sports. When a college football season begins, everybody hopes to be a national champion. season only a handful still have a chance new year's day 93 the real number may be just two the Superdome in New Orleans, another one of those moments in sport that could grow into legends. A real live chance to produce a college football champion without a vote. ABC Sports College Football presents the USF&G Sugar Bowl, number one Miami, number two Alabama. And a happy new year, everybody. We hope you're all well, warm, and happy. And we have a little party in the Superdome tonight in New Orleans we think you're going to find very entertaining. This is the first time the Sugar Bowl has had a consensus one versus two. There have only been five of those kind of games played in the postseason during all the time polls have been kept. And certainly having one finally happen in the Sugar Bowl is an exciting thing. Let's go back now to the posture of this consensus one and two because it features some of the great games in college football history. The first consensus one-two showdown came in the 1963 Rose Bowl. Quarterback Pete Bethard led Southern California to a 42-14 lead over Wisconsin. But quarterback Ron Vanderkellen led a raging comeback by the Badgers, falling just short at 42-37, and USC stayed number one. The last time consensus one and two met was in the Fiesta Bowl, 1987. Miami came with Heisman-winning quarterback Vinny Testaverde, ranked number one, but lost to number two, Penn State, 14-10. And the coaches in the game tonight say they get no message from the past. Everybody remembers that game and remembers uh, the implications that were involved with that football game, and it was one versus two. And uh, our players are aware of that, but uh, that was then. This is now. What happened to them several years ago is not going to affect this football game. We have a chance to, to win nas national back-to-back -back championships and go on undefeated two straight years. That's history. And we're, we're, we're very aware of that. This is just another big game for us. Well, when you have won uh, 29 straight and 22 straight, it doesn't take very long to figure out who's won and who's two, does it? It's been standing room only on Bourbon Street and down through the French Quarter, crowded and festive but fairly quiet, and everybody having a good time, including Bob Greasy, who was out among them and behaved himself well last night. As the Miami Hurricanes come into this great big old house, Bob, uh, they bring a lot of seasoning, they bring a lot of will, they bring a lot of excitement. Well, and they also bring the Heisman Trophy winner in, uh, in, in, in Gino Toretta. They are the defending national champions, as you can see, and last time they were here, they defeated Alabama 33-25. But I think there's more wisdom in this team, isn't there? There certainly is, and I think, you know, defense is what got both of these teams here. But it's the quarterbacks that are going to have to play well here today. Gino Toretta is impressive because, number one of his experience, he's starting his 29th game. He's only lost one. He's won a national championship. The other thing is his intelligence. He knows when to and how to make big plays, and he doesn't turn the ball over. 
It's a great, it's a great thing when you have a Heisman Trophy winner going against the number one defense. The biggest roar, of course, is for the Alabama Crimson Tide because there's about 50,000 faithful stuffed into the Superdome. They know how to get the tickets, apparently, because they've been here so many times. Alabama, on the other hand, after having talked about Toretta, is led by a sophomore quarterback, Jay Barker. And Barker has done nothing but win. He doesn't get a lot of respect because he's not pretty. He's undefeated as a starter, not a polished passer, and he cannot win this game with his arm. Gino Toretta might have to. But the story about this game all along has been defense, defense, defense. And, and for, the, for the Miami Hurricanes, it's Michael Barrow. And Barrow is not only an All-American, but he was a player of the year in the Big East, and he means as much to that defense as Toretta means to the offense. Alabama, on the other hand, Gene Stallings Ball Club led by two guys as good as I've seen in a long time at defensive end. Well, and Curry and Copeland, they probably ruined Gino Toretta's trip over to New Orleans this week just thinking about them. The two of them, 40 career quarterback sacks coming into the ball game tonight. There is just about everything in hand that one could want, including a very dramatic history of these two teams. Alabama dominated the 70s. Miami owned the 80s. The USF and G Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of Lincoln luxury automobiles by HBO. Think you've seen great entertainment before? HBO, just you wait. Bud Budweiser, the king of beers with that fresh, pure, natural taste. Nothing beats a bud. And by the Business Services Division of MCI. We're just about ready for the ball game. Gene Stallings walking the sidelines. Big, big chance for him to make a major point at home. Dennis Erickson has already made his point at home. The two coaches have been remarkable in their current jobs. The Miami Hurricanes, defending national champions, will have the ball first. Alabama won the first contest of the evening. They won the toss, and they deferred to the second half. The officials for the ball game, Southwest Conference, Rogers Redding, the referee. Playing inside, obviously, they're on a rug. The deep people for Miami will be number five, Kevin Williams, number three, Jonathan Harris. And it has long been my feeling that the little men would have something to say about the outcome of this ball game. Michael Proctor getting ready to kick it off, and here is perhaps the most dangerous man on the entire roster for the Miami Hurricanes, Kevin Williams. He is a junior from Dallas, Texas. So let us play for the national championship. They kick it right to Williams at the one. They pin him up. Short of the 20, George Teague, the first man to get there for Alabama. Number 13 right there. Gino Toretta, another number 13. Bit of a daring fellow there coming out with 13 on himself. As a quarterback, he is 26 and 1. He has led this team to a national championship. He has won the Heisman Trophy. He is the most decorated player in Miami University football history. They will open with Donnell Bennett as the running back, and they will start from their own 18-yard line first down. Double wide to the top of the picture. Miami will spread you all over the field. Toretta turns, throws to Bennett. Two men in front of him, and he's taken down just over the 20-yard line. Sam Shade came up and got his man. Kevin Williams will be at a, at a slot position, at a wide position occasionally. In fact, he will be a tailback on occasions. Donnell Bennett, as you saw, the lone back there. Horace Copeland and Lamar Thomas with Coleman Bell, the tight end, and it's Thomas who's perhaps the most dangerous of that group. 
It is the offensive line, however, that has been a big problem and story for Miami this season. Ferretta working out of the shotgun. Alabama shows the blitz. They don't go. They do get pressure with Curry in pursuit. Now they go get him. Run him down at the original line of scrimmage, the 18. It's Tommy Johnson who got there. The offensive front for Miami we were talking about, they will start tonight with five seniors up there. A lot of veterans, they're all fifth-year seniors after having had to play some freshmen and having to move Etheridge from a tight end to a tackle. Cristobal coming off injury. So the offensive line is in better shape tonight than it has been all season for Miami. It is third down and 10 now for the Canes back at the 18. Alabama, they have seven, eight people up on the line. Out of the shotgun, they go after him. Got the heat on him, his pass is away, and the pass is dropped by Coleman Bell incomplete. And so, Alabama could come out of this with pretty good field position as Miami will go to the punt, and Alabama will send David Palmer number two deep, and he, like Kevin Williams, is a dynamite kick returner who can give you very good field position if he should miss the end zone. Paul Snyder, a senior from Laguna Niguel, California, is the punter. He's standing inside his five. He'll hit it around the eight. Palmer waits at the 42. Low kick. Palmer's got room. Three canes coming after him. Runs between two of them. He's got a hole! He's all the way back down to the 24-yard line. That's field position. Donnell Bennett brought him down. The deuce has put Alabama's offense on the front court. As advertised, David Palmer, he's run four punts back in his career for touchdowns. He's only played two years at Alabama. He had three punt returns last year and won the first game of this year that he played. If he takes it to the right side or to his right, he might have scored. 24-yard line, first down for Alabama. Barker turns, pitches to Lassick. He goes right up the middle and gets it down to the 20-yard line where Greer brings him down. Jay Barker is a young man, a sophomore from Trussville, Alabama. 6'5", 209. He's 16-0 as a starter. Kind of interesting that the place kicker for the Hurricanes of Miami, Pruitt, comes from Trussville. Alabama. Good friends with Jay Barker, the quarterback for Alabama. Second down and five. Big play here for Lassick. He's inside the 10. It's first and goal to go for the Tide. Jesse Armstead brought him down. Watch the right tackle. That's going to be 77 Patterson. It's a little trap play. Alabama doesn't want a lot of traps, but they saw in the Syracuse game against Miami late in the year that some trap plays were successful. They put some traps in and some misdirection to go against that fast and quick Miami defense. Derek Lassick is from Haverstraw, New York. He's 190 pounds. We saw him have a very big day against the Tennessee. The referee, Rogers Redding, has called timeout and points toward Miami. Alabama threatening in a scoreless game. Last year, they won it all. Now it's do or die for the Redskins as they battle the Minnesota Vikings to kick off an NFL playoff doubleheader Saturday on ABC Sports. The story on the Alabama offense, as they have operated inside the 20-yard line this season, they have been quite efficient. Thank you. Miami defensively, 23 times opponents have been in there. They've scored 16 of those 23. Ball is just inside the six-yard line. It's first down and goal for the Red Elephants. And Barker rolls it to the right, flips it. Had the ball tipped at the line of scrimmage. One of the Canes got his hand on it. I think it was Casey Greer, number 29. He had his man wide open. And uh, the, just a little finger stopped it. He's rolling out. Barrel runs through the opening, but there was nobody there. He was trying to hit the halfback. Classic. He was wide open. 
So Casey Greer makes a big play for the Hurricanes. And it's second down and goal for Alabama at the six. 12 minutes and 22 seconds to play in the first quarter. What a classic power football to the left side and down to the three. Running into the boundary, hoping that the offensive blocking could outnumber the defense. And they get three yards on the play. Michael Barrow and Kevin Patrick on the tackle for the game. The Hurricanes have given up 14 touchdowns this year, and only four of those 14 were on the ground. The other 10 in the air. Third and goal outside the three. Miami defense being tested early. Set up by David Palmer's punt return. That was set up by Alabama's staunch defensive play in the first series. Parker rolls it right, cuts it back into the middle, dives for the goal line, and he can't get there. Robert Bass, number 49, a middle linebacker who had been added to the goal line defense, turned him back, and the kicking team is in. The Miami defensively coming into the game, scoring defense in the nation is third best. They only allow 12 points on an average. There was a hole there for a second. Parker couldn't get there quick enough, and the speed of Miami closed it up. Hardy's taken it down at the two-yard line, and here is Michael Proctor. It's a 19-yard field goal try. It's good. But, in a way, you got to think that Miami feels like they won something, too. Alabama got the three to lead it by a field goal. Well, both teams may have learned a little something as uh, first and goal at the six, the tide is turned away by a tough Miami defense. And now the kickoff will go probably right to him again. The first time we opened the ball game, they kicked it right to Kevin Williams. They got him short of the 20. Let's see what they decide to do this time. Alabama score, Keith, they're really set up, first of all, by the good defense, three and out for Miami, but then, of course, the uh, punt return by David Palmer. Proctor hits a good one. Inside the end zone a yard deep, Williams is coming. Goes to the boundary, looking for a hole, not there. Lost the ball as he was hit on the boundary, but the ball went out of bounds, and again, it is Teague coming down the field to melt him. So as Gino comes out for the Miami offense, here's a look at your Alabama defense. And because Miami uses three wide receivers and only one back, Alabama will play with four defensive linemen right there, two defensive back, uh, two linebackers, Lemansky, uh, Hall, and Oden, and five uh, defensive backs, Langham and Teague, are the primary uh, corners with all the interceptions. You have Stephen McGuire, number 30, in the backfield now for the first time. He's been injured much of the season, but he's healthy. He's a good one. They give it to him. He slides along the line of scrimmage. He'll pick up a yard. Seven of the 11 All-SEC defensive players in 1992 came from Alabama. Curry, Copeland, Hall, London, Langham, Odom, and T. And four of those players are all Americans. If you take a look at how stingy the Crimson Tide have been, in the first quarter. Second down and nine for Miami. Things beginning to settle just a little bit. In a game of this stature, the first five minutes, the adrenaline is pounding. Now it seems to be settling a bit. Toretta out of the shotgun, buying a little time. Getting the heat now. Throws, pass complete. Passes complete up to the 26-yard line to Horace Copeland. And Copeland is uh, taken down rather firmly at the 26. Now let's say a Happy New Year to our partner, Jack Aroot. Happy New Year to everybody, too. Keith, you talked about this 50,000-plus Bama fans. Well, it certainly is a noisy partisan crowd. But let me tell you what Rogers Redding, the referee for tonight's contest, told both teams in pregame meetings. He said he would, does not prefer to invoke the noise rule. He says, gentlemen, you will have to play through the noise. That could come into play tonight. Third down at about four. 
Beretta lifting the leg, indicating to the center everything's all right. That little puck pass over the middle to Kevin Williams, and he's on his way across midfield. He's all the way down to the Alabama 39-yard line. They may put it on the 40, but there's the blazing speed of Kevin Williams coming to the fore. They've been doubling the outside receivers out here. Here's Williams. He's not going to go downfield. He's going to come underneath the coverage, and he's going to hit the, uh, the wide receiver on a little slant route, and he runs away from everybody else. If he goes downfield, they're going to double cover him, so he comes across field and makes a big play on the run. Number 10, Tommy Johnson's the man that ran him down. Ball is just an inch or so inside the 40-yard line. Beretta goes back under center to a one-back offense set. Stands up quickly, lets it go down the middle, and the pass was incomplete. Intended for Daryl Spencer, number 35. He is another fellow who is listed as a tailback, but in fact plays in a wide position more than he does the running back position. Alabama is leading in the ball game on a 19-yard field goal, three to nothing. Beretta is now three for five, 42 yards, and he's been taken down one time. There, his career, very impressive numbers. The thing about Toretta, too, uh, Keith, he doesn't turn it over. Over 400 passes this year, only seven interceptions. Donnell Bennett back in the lineup, big fella, 227. Now he steps up into a slot, so it's a no-back set. And Toretta drops back and throws, and he hits his man right on the numbers. Jonathan Harris, number three. 5'9", 165-pound sophomore out of Houston, Texas. He turned and angled for the marker, and he went just past it. First down, Miami. Quite a story about the fellow who wears that Ibis suit. That's right. John Ruth, the uh, Miami Ibis, was down on Bourbon Street and was uh, struck by a bullet they think was fired in celebration from a far away. It came straight down and just grazed him. Raised his cheek, he's all right in, 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 in uniform tonight. First down, put it on the 29 of Alabama. Miami is beginning to mount its first threat, but nothing there this time as Stephen McGuire, the senior out of Brooklyn, New York, is put on his back for a loss of a couple of yards. We'll show you the scores of other games. The Southeastern Conference, incidentally, is doing very well in the postseason. They're undefeated so far. And there is one more game to be played tomorrow. Mississippi State playing in the Peach Bowl. Stanford had a, a big win for them today. And uh, you see Georgia, Ohio State. That would be a good ball game down in the Citrus Bowl. Ball comes back to the 32 where it is second down and 13 for Miami. And Toretta drops back again to the shotgun. It's a short shotgun. Puts it high in the air. And the Miami receiver going down the sidelines. Kevin Williams had no chance to get to it. Right here, let us take five seconds so our ABC stations across the country can tell you who they are. You're watching Channel 31, Huntsville. Three to nothing, Alabama leading. Miami got a little threat going here on third down and 13. The ball resting at the Alabama 32-yard line. Dean Alabama. Stallings there. You just saw Dennis Erickson, the coaches. He I was just going to say Alabama doing a nice job defensively of mixing up their coverages. Giving Gino Toretta a lot of different looks. John Copeland is in a down position right now. And playing over a guard. There's a long pass to the sidelines intended for Lamar Thomas. He looked inside and looked outside. And by that time, he had no chance. And there was pretty good coverage again. In fact, there were two uh, Alabama people over there. The Michigan Wolverines get a win, 38-31, over the Washington Huskies. And so Gary Moeller can probably go home to a little piece now. Well, they haven't won too many Rose Bowls in the last uh, <laughs> right. few trips out there. All right, this will be a 39-yard field goal try for Dane Pruitt. 49, 49-yard 49 field goal try. Got a lot of leg on it. And made it. So, Pruitt hits from 49 yards, and we're all even at three with 7.49 to go in the first quarter. They go by names like Chapel Lane. 
California Highway 1 and the Great White Way. Roads that start out in small towns like Pottersville and lead you to bigger towns like Pumpkin Corners. There are over 4 million miles of roads in Alamo Territory all across America. And every day, with every car nationwide, only Alamo gives you all those miles for free through a country we call America to the place we call home. Those smart folks at Magnavox have asked me to tell you about all their highly intelligent products in just 15 seconds. You must be joking. Impossible. No way. Don't be ridiculous. But no, that's it. I quit. Magnavox. Smart. Very smart. It's a very sophisticated system. You're probably better off taking it to the GM dealership. We haven't got that kind of equipment here. Best bet's the dealership. Pretty tricky stuff. Out of our league. Sorry. Try the dealership. The dealership. The GM dealership. Big George Foreman is getting ready to fight again. Over the years, his six foot four inches of pure punching power has racked up 66 KOs. And now, he's ready to meet his next challenger. Beer Kutzer, live and only on HBO. It takes a big man to go up against George Foreman. Oh, big guy. No, no, no. no. Uh-uh. I'm so big, sometimes I even scare myself. Is Big George ready? Just you wait. They call it a dime package, yep. six DBs, but now here come the linebackers back yep. into the line. Bill Oliver, defensive coordinator, showing Toretta during the timeout, six defensive backs in the game. Then when the time was whistled in, he took two of them out and changed the defense. Now, now he's changed changing again. the back. <laughs> the mind games that are going on right here. Toretta called his play, and uh, then Oliver sent the uh, six defensive backs back into the ball game, and Alabama's got 11 people up on the line of scrimmage. Toretta obviously is going to check off and change the play. And now Antonio Langham dropped off for a second. And he lets it go. He's throwing it for Copeland, and Copeland has no chance to get to it. He is mired in traffic. He was absolutely covered. There were three people with him. Alabama giving a lot of different looks defensively. Uh, and here they are, what they are in the nation. Alabama leads in total defense and rushing defense, and they're second in scoring in pass defense. The last five or six weeks, they have led in every defensive category, but uh, since the SEC championship game against Florida, they fell down in the pass and scoring categories. It's kind of tough when you fall to second, isn't it? Second down and 10. The ball is on the 23 of Miami. 3-3 three, three tie, minute and 45 to go, first quarter. And Toretta calls a timeout. That's their second timeout of the first half. So he's looking for a little help from the sidelines with all of this moving around of the Alabama defense. Now let's check in with Jack Aruba. Well, Keith, earlier this afternoon, Coach Dennis Erickson called a private meeting with only his players. And what he proceeded to tell those players was something that they had known all year. You know, at the beginning of the year, they lost two of their former players, Shane Curry and Jerome Brown, in separate and very tragic accidents. Well, he informed the players that as they had dedicated their season to those two fallen comrades, he felt that it was necessary to bring both Brown and Curry's parents to this game. They are sitting in the stands behind me. And what Erickson told the team was, we are family, they should be here, and the team has dedicated tonight's game to the memory of Jerome Brown and Shane Curry. Okay, Jack. 148 to play in the first quarter. Dennis Erickson, who just had a contract extension through 1999. So that should uh, quiet the rumors of him going pro immediately, though I suspect there's some kind of an escape clause there. Well, One I would think. Isn't there always? Yep. But he wants to stay in Miami. He's, he has said that over and over. So from the 23, second down and 10 for the Canes. A little bit of a delay to Kevin Williams, and they eat him up inside the 15. The play was bungled up. Alabama was coming. It was a slow developing play, and uh, there was just no chance. They buried him. Curry and Copeland together. Something a little different, something that uh, Miami has not seen, 94 and 80. They're upfield. They don't know. Said, hey, this is a passing situation, a passing team. Whoa, reverse is coming back. I'll take this guy. He's yeah. a lot smaller than I am. <laughs> is that amazing that they ran it, ran that uh, 
counter exactly at him. Miami is confused, Keith. Yep. Uh, Bill Oliver, defensive coordinator, has done a nice job with Alabama moving around a lot of personnel. Miami right now is minus 13 yards rushing. Out of the shotgun, Toretta. Let's it go to the sidelines. Too high. Pass intended for Kevin Williams. It is fourth down. He had him open. He just was looking downfield and saw the coverage and tried to come back to the outlet and just overthrew him. So David Palmer comes ambling onto the field. The sophomore out of Birmingham. Alabama's got everybody up on the line, 10 of them. No pressure on Snyder. The kick is away, and Palmer drifts under it at the 43. Look at how quick he is. That's a fine open field tackle by number 19, C.J. Richardson for Miami. And so Alabama once again comes out of this with a very good field position as Gino Toretta had his troubles in that last series. Palmer shaking his head, realizing that uh, if he gets by that one man that took him down, he might still be going. Miami mean, can't run the ball. They've only tried four times, minus 13 yards. That is not their strength. Alabama needs to run the football. They're averaging 4.6 per carry. That is very good. Ball is on the 48-yard line. First down for the Tide. Ball is given to Lassick. Penalty flags on the field. The first time we've seen the yellow cloth tonight. Southwest Conference team of officials. There they are, Rogers Redding, the referee, man in the white hat. Offside Miami. I was just thinking as I looked at that list of officials, have you ever seen a list of Southwest Conference officials that didn't have a, na a man named Bible on it? <laughs> There's a lot of folks named Bible. I don't know, but I'll start country. looking from now on. <laughs> It'll be first down and five as the ball goes over to the Miami side of the field and rests now at the 47. Kevin Lee is that man split wide at the bottom of your picture there. Classic is the man in motion. They hand it to the big guy, the up back, Martin Houston. He's from Center, Alabama, and Michael Barrow is right there, button heads with him, along with Kevin Patrick. Another trap play. The right guard was pulling, and uh, Michael Barrow read the uh, trap and got up there and made the play. It'll be second down and five as we come to the end of the first quarter of play, and after one at the USFNG Sugar Bowl in New Orleans. The championship game, a 3-3 tie. The USFNG Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Lexus Luxury Automobiles, the result of a relentless pursuit of perfection. And by USFNG Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life. I heard somebody make the point yesterday, I think it was, that uh, tomorrow, or is it Sunday, the New Orleans Saints and Philadelphia Eagles play here? Sunday. And he said, we may have two football games played in the Dome, and uh, collectively they may not score ten points. <laughs> this is Derek Lassick getting some blocking, finding daylight. And finally knocked out of bounds at the 23-yard line of Miami. Paris Harris stayed with him and shoved him out. A tough run by Derek Lassen. There's a look at Darren Smith, 45. He's going to be blocked to the outside by Houston. Just a little shove. He tried to get around and make a play. It's going to be to your left. Watch the block of the fullback. Barrow gets pushed out by Shields. An arm tackle won't do it. And Lassick with a big gain. First down, Bama. At the Canes, 23. Lassick stays in it. Tailback. Has it again. Runs into the middle, and he is 
taken down. Injury to a key man for the Canes. Let's check with Jack Arute. Well, Keith, we do have a key injury. Behind me is Horace Copeland. He came off in that last series complaining of a sprained knee. That's what Dr. John Uribe has diagnosed it. They have added this brace to add some support to that right knee. Right now, the doctor says he's questionable as to whether he'll return. They're going to keep him out at least for a series or so. An enormous loss if he can't come back, particularly in light of the point that Bob just made that Miami has shown no ability so far to run the ball. Call it second down and nine and move the ball to the 23. Whoa, what a block. Barker with a good run back into traffic. Number two for Miami, uh, Rohan Marley. They call him the rat because he is so quick. He came flashing through. Somebody took his legs from under him, and yet he was still involved in the pursuit. Right side of your screen, number two. Watch as he dives over the block, tries to make the play. Now watch him. He's going to get up and have another shot at Barker. Barker <laughs> doubles back, and he almost gets him. That's Bob Marley's son. The reggae entertainer. I'm sure many of you have been entertained so many times by the late Bob Marley. That's his boy. Third down and four. Palmer in motion. Let's throw the ball to him. He's got it. At the 11, out of bounds, and it's first down, Alabama. So Barker completed the pass in the face of the blitz. This is the type of passing Alabama does best. The simple stuff, quarterback just throwing a quick out to the wide receiver, little hitch wide receiver screen. If it gets any more complicated than that, it's kind of tough. But when you blitz and you have man in the secondary and you have a guy with the speed of Palmer, that's a big first down right there for Alabama. So they're knocking on the door here early in the second quarter of play and a 3-3 tie. Classic. Penalty flag as he goes down. You may have a face mask. You may have had one back up the field away. Now you get another flag thrown by one of the officials in the end zone. The man in the white hat will tell you about it. It's going to be against Miami. He had a great block on the play, Keith, by the fullback, Houston. Mark Caesar's taken off his uh, hard hat and is walking around doing a little lobbying, but the conference continues with the officials. I thought there might have been a face mask at about the six or a seven yard line. No flag called there. And uh, then as they got down to the goal line, you had a couple of flags. They have a face mask foul against the right. There is a face mask call against Miami. First down. We have a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against the red team. 15-yard fielding, first and goal. All right, Alabama gets hit. I didn't hear him, Bob. Uh, his say? microphone was out. Unsportsmanlike conduct on uh, Alabama. And you, you face mask on Miami, and, and, and you do the uh, major, major penalty. Watch the block on uh, number one to the left of your screen. That's number one. Watch Houston right here, number 35, as he just lays Armstead down. And Lassig with some nice moves. There's the face mask right there. Well, it, uh, it could have been some celebrating. I don't know. But the ball comes back out to the 15-yard line where it's first down and goal to go. And the pitch goes oh, to about the 12 for Sherman Williams, who is in the game, number 20. Williams bringing fresh legs to the attack now. A sophomore, 190-pounder from Mobile. Here's a look at the first quarter stats, the things that jump out at you. Miami with only two first downs and minus 13 yards rushing. Alabama only six yards passing and the two interceptions for the Crimson Tide. Williams and Lynch in the backfield behind Barker on second down and goal. Give it to Williams right up the middle to the five to four. Almost got in there. 
But he took a hard lick. I think it was Greer who's getting up a little slowly, but Casey Greer just sold out trying to make the tackle and took a lick. Just straight blocking. Uh, nobody's pulling. Uh, the fullback uh, Lynch, that's 45, gets a block on Barrel. And Greer comes in and just tries to throw a shoulder into him, number 29. That won't get it. The uh, Hurricanes lost both safeties off of this team from last year. And if you have a weakness defensively, it's probably the two safeties coming up and tackling. Third and goal from the four. Give it a Lassick. Head on. I mean head on with Michael Barrow and Mark Caesar. Miami is a quick defense, Keith. They run well from side to side. One of the problems they've had periodically in the last few years is stopping a power running team that comes right at you. Now, Sonny Lubick, the defensive coordinator, said if we can't stop them, we can do some other things. Five-man line and blitz. This looks like it might be about 23 yards for Michael Proctor. He hit a 19-yarder for the first score of the ball game. He adds the 23, and Alabama goes back to the lead by a score of 6-3. to three. And Proctor takes a wallop himself. Paul White slides into him. Oh, that's a little acting job there. Not bad, though. i got to say, Michael, you've got showing some promise. 6-3, to three, Alabama leads at 10.48 to go in the first half. Gene Stallings is red hot. I mean, he could bite a ten-penny nail and not even think about it right now, and he's still mad about the uh, unsportsmanlike conduct call. And the only thing that we can find uh, anywhere or anybody saw was the spinning of the ball in the end zone and a little celebration by apparently Lassick. And one of the officials came in late, threw a flag on it, and uh, that's what was called. I well, guess. he would have had the ball on the one foot line. Instead, got it way back at about the uh, outside the 10 and didn't and ended up not getting six points out of it and had to settle for a field goal. But I'll tell you right now, Beebs is stimulated. 35-yard line where Alabama will kick it from. Proctor nailed it. Kevin Williams, two yards deep in the end zone, is coming out. Going for the sideline. And George Teague is waiting for him. That's three times Teague has made the tackle on a kickoff. So George has become the headhunter tonight. Teague is uh, the starting right corner. He led the SEC in interceptions last year and again this year. In fact, this year he tied with Antonio Langham, his partner at the other corner. Here's, I think, uh, something of a revealing stat. But uh, it, it can be, I should say that. But the, the, you know, the two games that we did were uh, they beat Florida State and then went up to Penn State and won that game. Oh, boy. Alabama showing 10 people up on the front. They're just head up with them right now. And Toretta with a quick drop looks to throw, and he can't do anything with it. There's just nobody there. He had Kevin Williams coming downfield. And uh, Toretta never had any chance at all to get the ball to Williams. Well, what, what, what are they doing to Geno and the University of Miami? Well, th th they're confusing him right here. All 11 men are at the line of scrimmage defensively. Now, what does he try to do? He tries to throw the ball quickly to the wide receiver down here, and he's ready to throw a quick out, and the receiver is running straight up the field. Second down and 10. You got a man playing center field for Alabama. Curry coming around the corner, missed him. He's taken down, and Toretta takes off, and Gino's got a first down, sliding all the way to the 43 yard line. Let's go back to that penalty. First, you had the face mask call against Miami as Alabama was threatening. Here's that penalty right there. Now, let's go ahead here for the penalty against Alabama. He, he thinks he scores, yeah. Yeah. There's a flag that went in for the um, face, mask. face mask. Now he spins the ball. Oh, that's... And there oh, goes the flag. That's awful. Uh, awful Ooh, close right there. Picky. In a national championship game. Uh, that's picky. That's pretty close right there. 
First down for Miami at the 43. It's a big ball game. We need the kids to play it. Give it to Bennett. And Donnell Bennett showing his medal as he pounds for about six before Willie Gaston finally succeeds in getting him on the ground. Bennett's a big guy, 227 pounds. Clock rolling along in the first half of play, 9.45 to go, and Alabama leading 6-3. to three. We've had three field goals in the game so far. Florida State leading Nebraska 20-7 at halftime in the Orange Bowl. Southeastern Conference having a banner year in postseason play with one game remaining after this one. They're undefeated. Toretta checks off, spins his last timeout. That is Miami's third timeout of the first half. So Alabama's defense got him confused. He goes to the sidelines and asks for some help. Well, Gino Toretta, the fifth-year senior, has had his troubles with this Alabama defense. He's had and two he's problems, Keith. He's, number one, it's been the Alabama defense confusing him, and he's had to take some timeouts when he tried to check off. And the other thing has been the noise. What you can do on that is you just have to have some plays that are good against anything that the defense is going to throw up there and just go with it. It is second down and four with Bennett, the single back. Fumble by Toretta coming away on the snap, covers the ball. Gino falls on it back at the 45. And you get a little bit of a ruckus there. And a, a, a Curry. Curry gets tangled up with Coleman Bell and number 72, uh, Mario Cristobal. And Rogers Redding is in the middle of it. Now, Cristobal <laughs> is 280 pounds. Curry is 265. And both of them chew bark for breakfast. <laughs> and, the, and the referee's about 190. <laughs> He just pulled out a little bit, looking uh, looking the other direction. You expect that ball to be there. It's like a no-brainer, and uh, that, that cost him a down there. Third and nine after the fumble. They go to the shotgun. Pretty good protection. Down the middle, intercepted. Picked off by Sam Shade. Sam's inside the 35, down to the 31. Take a look at what they're doing. They're doubling the two outside receivers over here. The man he tries to get the ball to is the tight end down the middle. Now watch as the man covering the tight end, that's Shade. If you stop it right there, stop it. There he is, right there, and he's, he intercepts the ball. Good coverage, doubling the outside and running with the inside man. And the tide is operating at the Miami 31 with Derek Lassick, the single back. He's got the ball. And he pounds his way down to the 28-yard line. The Alabama defense, since Gene Stallings took over in Tuscaloosa, has 61 pass interceptions in 37 ball games. So he brought some kind of a message and plan with him, didn't you? I yeah. think probably named Bill Oliver, don't you reckon? Well, Oliver was a key, and uh, they, they were fourth in the nation in turnover margin. They had a plus 18 coming into the ball game. They'd taken it away 18 more times and they'd given it away. Classic again. Big hole. They're back down, knocking on the door again at the three-yard line, first and goal. Jesse Armstead and Casey Greer finally got him down. And Derek Lassick has 15 carries, and with 7 minutes and 35 seconds to go in the first half, has 105 yards. Just a little toss. Linebacker right there. Oh, Barrow's going to overrun it. Now, big 77, Patterson in red right there downfield, trying to help out. That's a double. Watch the, uh, the fullback again. That's Houston, number 35. The middle linebacker, Barrow, misses it. So it's first and goal. Give it to Lassick. 
to the one. Roosevelt Patterson at 6'4", 295. And he was right down there at his running back's elbow trying to lend a hand. I tell you what, though, Lassie can thank his fullback and his tight end, Buskey 83, and the fullback Houston, because those two guys, even though they are eligible receivers, are really offensive lineman types, and they really can block. Second down and goal from the one. Lassick, nothing at the top. Tried to go over the top, and uh, that's, that's a pretty hard thing to do. Miami, as I mentioned, tough to score on. Third in the nation, scoring defense. They just toughen up. That's a good play. That's uh, Bass, uh, yeah, Bass, 49, the backup inside linebacker. But they're all in there. Paul White, uh, who's a corner. He was down under the bottom of it. That's back. They're all up there involved. Third down and goal from the two, and Sherman Williams checks in. Williams in the middle, touchdown! <laughs> Ruth Ann Stalling, John Mark. Michael Proctor will try the point out of Jeff Wall's hold. Matthew Pine will snap it. The interception by Sam Shade led to this touchdown for Alabama. Kick is good. 6.09 to play in the first half. It is now Alabama 13, Miami 3. Another look at the touchdown by Williams. A little move to the left. He takes it back into the middle and plenty of daylight. Ten-point lead for the Crimson Tide with 6.09 to go in the first half. Tomorrow we've got the NFL here on ABC Sports beginning at 12 noon Eastern with a doubleheader. First game will have the defending champion Washington Redskins and the Minnesota Vikings. That's in the house in Minnesota, Minneapolis. And then they go west as Kansas City goes west to take on the AFC Western champion San Diego Chargers. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports. What a great job Bobby Ross has done out there in uh, San and Diego. Dan Humphreys is going to play, Bob. They've yep. got a harness for him, and uh, it wasn't that. That's his left shoulder, so yep. he throws right. As long as it's his shoulders and not, uh, not mine, he can play, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Proctor hangs it high, and Williams at the six. Kevin bounces out of one tackle and is finally taken out of bounds up around the 32-yard line. Williams, like Palmer, you think you got him and they're going to knock this little guy down, huh? Yep. All of a sudden, he's you're still looking at his hip pocket going the other way. The number's there on the Alabama scoring drive, but again, it was set up by the defense, the interception by Shea. Now let's see if they've been able to sort things out on the sideline for Gino Toretta. McGuire will check in at the running back position. Stephen McGuire. See if Miami, uh, what they elect to do. Will they try to run in a different manner? Or will they go to one of those wideouts? they got three of them to the bottom of the picture. They're going to run it with McGuire. And he pops through there about three yards. And we go down to Jackaroo. Keith, we're really happy to see this guy on the sidelines, Michael Rogers, who was involved in a very scary automobile accident Christmas Eve. Michael, you got out of the hospital a couple of days ago, but you can't play in this game. You're okay, though. Oh, well, yeah. I, well, I found out, you know, uh, I was I was, un, I was un, un, unhurt, harmed harm real bad. And I found out that I'd be able to dress out and stand on the sideline and tip with the guys. I knew I wouldn't be able to play for it. I knew I'd be able to be here, though, yeah. Well, we're happy to see him, Keith. A little adrenaline running there anyway, isn't it? Second down and seven. Crowd really warmed up now. Those wearing red. And McGuire tries the right side. 
And nothing behind Vickers and Cristobal and Green. You know, this 10-pointer, you see there, the 10-point deficit in the first half is, as you see, the largest deficit that Miami has had yep. this season. He got a man down, a Miami player. Is that Toretta? Looks like Cristobal. Cristobal? Can't see. And he's too big to be Gino. At 72, it's Cristobal. Yeah. So, timeout for Mario Cristobal. Well, they've got Cristobal to the sidelines. Uh, the way he was hit, one would have guessed it might have had something to do with one of his legs or an ankle. 72 right there in the middle of your screen. Looks like he's going to get pushed Maybe right at the end of man. this. Right at the end of this, gets pushed right there. Yep. Hurricanes have lost a right tackle who really solidified a lot of leadership when he came back. Zev Lumelski checks in to replace him. It is third down and seven. They are one out of five in third down conversions. Toretta yep. throws down the middle. It's in complete low intended for Jonathan Harris. And so it's fourth down and they'll have to punt. They were all up there again. Keith showing him blitz. They either come or they don't come. Look at them. All 11 at the line of scrimmage. Toretta reads it and tries to throw it quickly. They're coming. He can't block it. They throw it, and he just makes a poor throw. And David Palmer waits for the punt. Ryder knocks it all the way back to the 23. Palmer's looking at four white shirts. No place to go. Down at the 21. So you got 441 now as Alabama gets the ball back first down at their own 21 yard line. And Sunday night, ABC is the one network that will tell you the whole story. One of the controversial stories, Drew Barrymore, Amy Fisher, and the Amy Fisher story after life goes on. America's funniest home videos and America's funniest people. Sunday here on ABC. Well, they've got Cristobal to the sidelines. Uh, the way he was hit, one would have guessed it might have had something to do with one of his legs or an ankle. 72 right there in the middle of your screen. Looks like he's going to get pushed Maybe right at the end of man. this. Right at the end of this, gets pushed right there. Yep. Hurricanes have lost a right tackle who really solidified a lot of leadership when he came back. Zev Lumelski checks in to replace him. It is third down and seven. They are one out of five in third down conversions. Toretta yep. throws down the middle. It's in complete low intended for Jonathan Harris. And so it's fourth down, and they'll have to punt. They were all up there again. Keith showing him blitz. They either come or they don't come. Look at him. All 11 at the line of scrimmage. Toretta reads it and tries to throw it quickly. They're coming. He can't block it. They throw it, and he just makes a poor throw. And David Palmer waits for the punt. Ryder knocks it all the way back to the 23. Palmer's looking at four white shirts. No place to go. Down at the 21. So you got 441 now as Alabama gets the ball back. First down at their own 21-yard line. And Sunday night, ABC is the one network that'll tell you the whole story. One of the controversial stories, Drew Barrymore, Amy Fisher, and the Amy Fisher story after life goes on. America's funniest home videos and America's funniest people. Sunday here on ABC. Chris Anderson and Tarrant, Tarrant Lynch in the backfield. Give it to Anderson. He's quick. And coattailed by Casey Greer, who's having a very good defensive ball game for the Miami Hurricanes. You know, Anderson and Williams are two of the four running backs that uh, Alabama's going to have back next year. If, yeah. you're, if you're a quarterback looking for a place to play and you're a running back looking for a place to run, Tuscaloosa is a <laughs> pretty good place to apply, I'd say. Yes, sir. They're short in those positions. Second down and eight. That's Lynch pounding to about the 27. Guy leading it is John Stevenson. That is Mario Cristobal, who was hurt. 
taken out of the ball game. I can't tell if they're working on a knee, but it looks like they're it's either the there. knee or the ankle, yeah. something. Yeah. Third down and three now for Alabama. Parker hands it. And there will be no first down as Anderson is taken down quickly by Jesse Armstead. I think it's quite remarkable that all three of the starting linebackers for Miami have all long, all graduated, all have their degrees. Kevin Williams drops back. Now let's see if he can give his team some field position. Well, Miami needs a spark. Uh, they've been dominated defensively by uh, Alabama. This is Brian Beal's first punt of the night. He had a bit of a hard time late in the game against Florida. Doesn't get this one to turn over, but it does take an Alabama bounce. Good one. That's the old rug for you. All the way down to the 15-yard line. Totals 57 yards. In fact, it traveled about 35. Here is Jackaroo. Well, Keith, it's very tough when you're a lineman, especially when you get cut behind the knee. That's what happened to Mario Cristobal. So like his counterpart... Copeland, they're going to outfit him with a knee brace. They're going to tape it up, but in both cases, both players are still considered questionable. All right, Jack, thanks. 13 to 3, Alabama leads. 2.39 to go in the first half. Beretta's back there by himself. Four wideouts. Stretching across the field. Throws a Hummer. Double coverage. The only man that touched it was Tommy Johnson, a cornerback for Alabama. Toretta is now Toretta is now six of sixteen for sixty-eight yards. He's missed his last six. Missed his last six. Sixty-eight yards in the first quarter and none here in the second quarter. Yeah, but remember Penn State. He just hit a terrible, oh, terrible yeah. game. That's right. Well, he... The, the only thing he's done really wrong is, is through the interception. That set up their touchdown. Yep. Hooks that one. Overhands it to the 20-yard line where Lamar Thomas makes the reception. And they'll be looking at third down and uh, about five. Take a look at the secondary now. Let's go ahead and run it. Watch the uh, red shirts to the left of the screen. Watch them all just drop back in zone coverage. And he's going to hit right here, over here, the wide receiver as he comes in. But that is, they're mixing it up. They're dropping deep sometimes and playing zone. And then other times there's a low 11 at the line of scrimmage. Just another zone here. Pass complete to Daryl Spencer. And uh, that's going to be a first down for Miami out around the 29-yard line where Lemansky Hall makes the tackle. And so they move the chains now at 151 to go in the first half of play. And Toretta goes back on to center. Penalty flags all over the place. Miami burned their timeouts early in the ball game. We have a dead ball foul. False start. And the offense. Jonathan Harris. Five yard penalty. Still first down. So they make a mistake now. They have things going. They've moved the chains. They kind of quieted the crowd. And then they make a little mistake. Miami can't run. And they really haven't thrown a lot. Alabama has dominated them defensively in the, here in the first half. First and 15. That pass caught on the ricochet by Chris Jones. Jones had it hit him on the shoulder pad and almost lost it. But reeled it in and moves it up to the 32. They've got to go to right about the 39 to get the first down. And Jones is in there replacing Horace Copeland. There's quite a drop off from Copeland to Jones. Clock rolling along, coming up on a minute. 
Pass is complete to Coleman uh, to uh, Kirkheide. Kevin Kirkheide makes the catch. And that's a first down. Ball comes out across the 45. 46. Alabama doing some shuffling in their defense. Uh, Toretta's throwing the short inside stuff. Lock wound now and rolling. 50 seconds. Penalty flag down. I think they're going to ding Curry here for going too soon. Eric may have been a little early when he went through the neutral zone. Number 80. Yep. Number 80, closest to the uh, line of scrimmage and across it right there. He's second all time in sacks at the University of Alabama. He came in with 23. On well, the defense, five yard penalty, replay first down. That moves the football just across midfield. Tell you, look out, this guy. Uh, he keeps getting up. That's Florida State, huh? Yep. 35 seconds. Pass is complete to Thomas. And Lamar Thomas runs out of bounds down around the 42 or 43 yard line of Alabama. And that's going to move the chains again. So that stops your clock now. He goes out of bounds at 27 seconds. We showed you the zone earlier. Now look at all the Alabama players up there. This is they're doubling both wide receivers here. Look at the confusion there now. Stop it right there. Just look. look. The only man open is right here. Everybody else has two or three red shirts around them. Shotgun. Let it go. Thomas after it. Incomplete. Defending on the play, Willie Gaston, number 22. And Lamar Thomas is shaken up. Gaston came down, I think, on his leg. And Thomas having trouble getting up. There you take a look at it uh, in isolation. Thomas just running a streak. Gaston, a true freshman, plays this ball very nicely as there's a little pushing and shoving. Thomas goes up and tries to make the play. I don't see anything uh, where he where fell on. Nobody no. fell on his knee or no. anything. No. This is a little hyperextension. Hurricanes do this a lot, especially with Copeland and Thomas. They both can jump. He went down hard on the turf. Perhaps that was what it was. Yeah. He's leaving the ball game. 19 seconds to play in the first half. 13 to 3, Alabama leads. And Miami owns the ball at the Alabama 43 yard line. Second down and 10. Only 10 points. Loretta lets it go. Kevin Williams after it. Great play defensively by Antonio Langham. And his hot streak continues. It looked for a moment, a daring moment, that the darter had it in his hands and would get in there for six. But watch this play by number 43. Well, he red. found the man with single coverage. They were all up there, but he just outruns him. If this ball is thrown a little flatter and gets there quicker or further across field away from Langham, it could have been completed. But Langham does an outstanding job. We mentioned the two All-American defensive ends. Langham, a third-team All-American, benefits from that hard pass rush. Lamar Thomas is back with 13 seconds to go in the first half. Third down and 10 from the 43 of Alabama. Toretta throws a bullet complete to Thomas inside the 25. That's the first down. That stops the clock. They're trying to get new people on the field. Now Dennis Erickson is over there saying to his quarterback, as soon as you can get the ball, throw it in the ground and stop the clock. Right here, they'll wind the clock just as soon as uh, the people are in place. Alabama's uh, 
making some personnel changes, getting a lineman back in and taking London out. They hurried to get uh, Everett Brown in the ball game, and now... Well, that was a quick four seconds, I want to tell you. <laughs> there were five seconds on the clock, and from the time the umpire removed his foot to the time he threw it, four seconds flew by. It certainly did. 42-yard field goal try coming up. So this could be a big boost for the Hurricanes if they could get something out of this. Alabama going to try to ice him. So they'll take a time out here and let Dane Pruitt think about it. With one tick remaining. Dane Pruitt waiting to have a shot at a 42-yard field goal. He hit his career long earlier in the ball game from 49 yards. And as soon as the ball is snapped, this half will end. One touchdown, three field goals. Gene Stalling said yesterday he thought there might be more scoring in this game than most people were expecting. Well, and when you have a defensive team, and they're going to take another timeout right here, the uh, field goal kickers uh, become more and more poor important on low-scoring games. Pruitt walking around from a community. Uh, here's Jack. Well, Keith, let me tell you a story about Dane Pruitt. You see, he's a year older than Michael Proctor, but they both went to Alabama schools and were rivals. Well, Pruitt did all through his career. In fact, had talked to Gene Stallings about walking on at the University of Alabama. In fact, he told Stallings he was going to do so. But then, lo and behold, Michael Proctor announced as a junior that he was going to attend the University of Alabama. So what happened is Pruitt told me, he said, I didn't have a place to go. He said, I was at a football banquet over Thanksgiving. My senior year, I ran into Dennis Erickson. Erickson handed me his card. He said, send me your transcript. Lo and behold, he's in Miami. Strange right things. Now, ready to try from 42 yards. Pretty good looking kick. Down the highway. And at halftime, it's Alabama 13, Miami 6. And we'll be back with a halftime after this message and the word from our ABC station. Happy New Year from Channel 31. Music is Rhapsody in Blue. The band director is Michael Arman. Nick, sing, sing, sing! Brett Musburger checks in with us now for some highlights of that ball game.
just a classic Rose Bowl earlier in the day. Michigan prevailing 38 to 31, and Dick Vermeil, the lead, changed hands six times in this shootout. Well, when you move the ball for 894 yards, the lead has to change. Brent, the field's only 100 yards long, you know. <laughs> Let's take a look now at some of the key moments from the Wolverines' triumph. Elvis Gerbeck in his last game handing off to the young man Tyrone Wheatley who exploded. And you know he only carried the ball 15 times today for 235 yards. He couldn't go uh, in later in the ball game because he had back spasms. Can you imagine what he would have been able to do if he carried it 25 times. And this the difference. Tony McGee number 88 slipping out and Gerbeck hitting him with the pass that gave the Wolverines a Rose Bowl triumph. So it was a great one. Washington's run comes to an end, and Gary Moeller wins for the first time as the head football coach at Michigan. So, Dick, you and I will go down to San Diego now for tomorrow's AFC game between the Chargers and Kansas City. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Hi, I'm Norman Blake, chairman of USF&G. It's great to see the spirit of competition involved in this national championship game. As is the case with this game, competition is very intense in the insurance industry and brings out the best in each player. There are also times when tragedy strikes, which brings out the best in all of us as well. Such has been the case with Hurricane Andrew, everyone turning out to help those involved in this moment of tragedy. For the insurance industry, it was more than just paying claims. It was a time for people to help people. Many insurance companies joined by literally thousands of volunteers organized food drives to help in the aftermath of the storm. On Thanksgiving, over 9,000 turkey dinners were served. So I'm really proud of our sponsorship of this game and the insurance industry's efforts to help those adversely affected by Hurricane Andrew. After all, it is from such competition and overcoming adversity that brings out the best in all of us. Diego, it'll be the Chargers and the Kansas City Chiefs. Let's get everybody up to date with Stan Humphreys because we were at the Charger practice with him on Wednesday. Well, he appeared to be healthy. They're wearing a pad on the shoulder, yes, but he participated in all passing drills, shared some of the time with Galliano, the backup quarterback, so he is ready to go too, but it, it appears that he's ready to go. I think you'd have to cut his right arm off to keep him out of this one. And when you play the Chiefs, better check your feet. Here comes Derek Thomas. That's tomorrow, Chiefs and the Chargers. That's one of two. Let's go to Frank Mike Gifford. Okay, Brent, the 92 NFL playoffs will begin right here in the Metrodome tomorrow, and it will be one noisy place. The Redskins and the Vikings. The Redskins backed into these playoffs when they lost to the Raiders at home last Saturday. And then 24 hours later, the Vikings put them back into the playoffs when they kicked the Green Bay Packers out. A lot of interesting stories surrounding this game. The two coaches on the sidelines, Joe Gibbs, 12-year veteran. He's won three Super Bowls, the last one right here last January. Across the field, Dennis Green, the rookie who's done such a great job with the Minnesota Vikings. A lot of people think he should be coach of the year. All right, we're back at the Superdome in New Orleans for the USF and G Sugar Bowl game with the Crimson Tide of Alabama leading number one ranked Miami by a score of 13 to 6. And the Alabama band is on the stadium floor right now. Let's listen. Well, only a touchdown and a conversion uh, separate these two teams. 13-6, Alabama leading at halftime, Bob. Uh, 
Is there anything here that you did not expect? Not really. Uh, Miami can't run and Alabama can't pass. And uh, Miami, what they do pass, uh, they're having a tough time of it. Uh, but the dominant force on the field is Alabama defensively. They are really confusing uh, Gino Toretta. And uh, he is the, the main player. He is going to have to step up and do it for Miami because they're not going to run the football. And he has to get the ball to those wide receivers. It's the type of offense the quarterback has to produce. Let's show you what has happened in case you got in late or you need to be caught up on uh, how the scoring happened. A field goal of 19 yards by Michael Proctor. First quarter lead Alabama 3 to nothing. Miami came back to tie it on Dane Pruitt's 49-yard career long field goal at 3-3. Moving on into the second quarter of play, we had an exciting little moment as uh, Derek Lassick was penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct. He thought he had scored. He spun the ball in the end zone, and they nailed him with a penalty, and it denied Alabama an almost sure touchdown. They settled for a 23-yard field goal and a Six to three lead. Now here's the penalty right here. You have a look and you see him spin the ball and you see the man wearing a striped shirt pull out a flag. I'm surely he must interpret that rule as, uh, as an automatic. So Michael Proctor kicks a 23-yard field goal for a 6-3 Alabama lead. And then Sam Shade stepped up and intercepted a Gino Toretta pass and brought it back to the Miami 31-yard line. Throwing into double coverage, couldn't touch it in, and Shade took advantage of it and returned it 33 yards. And from this play, uh, Sherman Williams will wind up with a two-yard touchdown run to make it 13-3. to three. Picks his way through the traffic. Conversion is good, and then the scoring ended on Pruitt hitting a 42-yard field goal, so he had 49 and 42 to make it 13 to 6 at halftime. And we'll be back with more action from the USF and G Sugar Bowl after this from our ABC station. I'm Dana King. And I'm Bill Ritter. Sunday, the differences between candidate Clinton and president-elect Clinton. Plus the changing face of religion in America and the annual check dating dilemma this Sunday on Good Morning America Sunday. The USF and June Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? And by USF and G Insurance, protecting your business, home, auto, and life. The teams are back in the stadium, not far from the second half of play. 13 to 6, Alabama leads. Here's Jack Aruba. Well, Keith, when we kicked off our college football season, we were in Iowa for the first Miami-Iowa game, but we were all concentrating and chronicling the problems in South Florida as the devastation of Hurricane Andrew took its toll. We looked at it through the eyes of Michael Barrow's mother, Mae Barrow, in Homestead, Florida. Her house totally devastated. Well, as the Red Cross closed their last and final aid station earlier this week, I'm pleased to tell you as well that Mae Barrow returned to her home in Homestead, Florida on Christmas Day, and she is watching her son and the rest of the Miami Hurricanes play from her home once again. Great story. Isn't that a great story? Mm. Yep. Pretty, pretty fine young man right there, too. Michael's probably be glad to get his bed back. He's been sleeping on the couch. He's got other business to take care of right now. As uh, first half statistics, uh, total plays about the same. But uh, Miami uh, rushing only six yards, passing 127. And for Alabama, their rushing is 152 and only 12 yards passing. Total yardage is in favor of Alabama. Turnovers are the same. Two interceptions for Barker in the first quarter. He hasn't had to throw any more after that. I'm sure they'll downplay that some in the second half. And for Toretta, it was a tough uh, first half. He had an interception. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Dennis Erickson and uh, Toretta and Rich Olson, the offensive uh, quarterback coach, tried to get straightened out. What the Alabama defense is doing both in the defensive front and in the secondary. But the point is, only a touchdown and a conversion. Seven points separate the team. That's one throw. So, I mean, it's, uh, 
at 10 you figure when you're playing a football team uh, when you get them down 10 points and you learn that is the biggest deficit they've had the entire season you know you're playing some pretty tough guy and there is Gino sorting things out and Alabama will have the ball first because they had won the toss and deferred and so Miami will be kicking to them to start the second half of play Here are the numbers off the first half. Look on the left side where it says Miami 24, Alabama got a field goal. It says Miami 31, Alabama got a touchdown. That's field position inside Miami's 31-yard uh, line. They got two scores that way. Barker is 2 of 8, only 12 yards and two interceptions. Lassick with 106 yards. And uh, really, Palmer and Wembley, nothing there. Proctor, 2 of 2 with field goals. Greer for Miami, the strong safety, has eight tackles. That's not good when your strong safety is leading you in tackles and one interception. And David Palmer waits now for Dane Pruitt's kickoff to start the second half of play. First time he had it, he went back 17. This one goes to William. Sherman Williams, he can run too. Out to the 20 he comes. And taken down there. And uh, Bass, number 49, among those involved in the tackle. And the Crimson Tide will go to work from the 20. This has been a tough ticket for a good long time when it became apparent that it would be this matchup of number one Miami and number two Alabama. We open with Lassick and Houston in the backfield behind Jay Barker. Wembley is number 32, and he's the white man. They put Lassick in motion. And throw on the first play. Uh, set up a screen for Wembley on a wide receiver screen that works for about five yards. Jesse Armstead, number one linebacker, was over very quickly on the play. That's a safe pass, Keith. That is one of the two passes that, that he completed in the first half. We talked about the two defensive ends a little bit about Patrick, number 86 for Miami, and Krein, number 91 on the other side. They really haven't done much. Patrick putting a little pressure. Of course, there's not much to do when a team doesn't throw a lot of passes and you're a defensive end and rush the passer a lot. Kevin Lee goes in motion for Alabama. Run it with Lassick over the right side on second down and five. And Michael Barrow is there for a tackle. Another one. He picks up a couple of yards and he'll be looking at third down and about three. The defense of Miami, Keith, has to dominate this game take charge of it they have not controlled the line of scrimmage like they have like they would have liked to there's the shields 51 61 excuse me on uh, barrel barrel seems to have held his ground and won out but this defense not the offense has been the strength of miami the last couple of years now david palmer goes in motion blitz parker lets it go for palmer and he's held up on the sideline out over there hooting for a call but good defensive play by White he just blocked him into the boundary and uh, he Palmer could not get down that sideline it's an out and up and you can jam them like that as long as they're in front of you and the ball has not been thrown when the ball was thrown uh, it was too late Kevin Williams is back waiting for the punt Brian Beal's first kick with the roll were on the rug was 57 yards no pressure on him, and he gets it out, and it's a good kick. High spinning spiral for Kevin Williams to the 29. They run him into the sidelines and run him out of bounds. So it's going to be good field position for the Canes. 43-yard punt, 9-yard return. This is what happened to the Canes in the first half. Miami got the ball in the third possession in Alabama's 39 and didn't do anything with it. They got a field goal just before half which uh, should have done some good things for them going in at halftime. Toretta, 12 of 25 and 127 yards. Pruitt, 2 of 2 in field goals has really kept him in the ball game. Number 88, Horace Copeland, has come back into the starting offensive lineup. So he's shaken off the, the ding that he took in the first half, and he's back out there. Donnell Bennett is the single back behind Toretta. Lamar Thomas is wide to the bottom of the picture. Toretta lets it go, and it's intercepted by Tommy Johnson. 
And Johnson is all the way down to the 20-yard line. Tommy Johnson having a huge ball game tonight. Well, you mentioned a huge ball game, Keith. He led the team in tackles in the first half, as you see Je Erickson. He's going to throw it to the left side. A little quick out. Three steps and out. Johnson is the nickelback. He is the fifth back that's been playing the entire ball game. That's his interception, first interception. He's had a sack. He's broken up two passes, and he's caused a fumble earlier in the ball game. He has been active. Ball is just inside the 21 with the Alabama. Posing a threat here. Give it a Lassick. Picks his way to the 20. And that'll be it. As Darren Crine, first time tonight, I've called his name. The big junior out of Aurora, Colorado. Defensive end. Here's Johnson here on the interception. And the man's going to go down and break to the outside. He's just going to cut in front of him. That's Williams, number five, in the slot. Breaks to the outside. That's just a great read by Johnson and a poor throw. You see him looking at you like that. You can't throw it out there. Alabama has called a timeout. 13 to 6 tide leading and the tide knocking on the door to start the second half. Not a good night so far for the Heisman Trophy winner, Gino Culetta, quarterback, Miami Hurricane. The Alabama folks over there are really giving it to him right now. It is second down and about 10, closer to 9, if you will, from the 20-yard line. Barker pitches it. Lassick gives it. The, oh, kept it. Turns it into the middle. Runs away from Packers. Great run by Lassick. Gets it down to about the 13-yard line. He's going to be two or three yards short of his first down. He faked it to Palmer. Picked his way through the traffic. Good run. This has been the Derek Classic show offensively. We haven't had a lot of offense. The two uh, field goal kickers have both made two field goals, but Derek Classic rushing for over 100 yards in the first half has been the offense. A touchdown man has just come in, Curtis Brown. Remember him? Yep. Got the touchdown in the SEC championship game. Right. He's wide top of the picture. Got Ryan McNeil on him over there. But Palmer goes that way to help him opening it up, and Palmer's wide open, and it can't get the ball to him. Parker runs for the first down. They mark him out at about the four. It'll be first down and goal, Alabama. There's a look at Palmer in motion. Now he's going to go and break to the left to the back of the end zone. Now McNeil is out there, number 47. He kind of comes back and picks him up. If the ball would have been thrown, he may have picked it off. It, it, it had to have been a very sharp, hard throw to get it in there. Yeah, but that was late. It could have been gone a good two seconds sooner. Yeah, but not from a... Kind of a double team on McNeil. They sent uh, Brown over there, and we've got a face mask call. We have a face mask foul against the defense. That's kind of like a replay of the last time, isn't it? First down. Here's a look at Smith, 45, the linebacker. The ball is at the two-yard line. Here's a look at Miami coming in. They had given the ball away 15 times this year, and it had led to only two opponent TDs. That's pretty strong. Classic will not get anywhere near that goal line. He is rolled up in a hurry with McNeil coming out of that corner position to lead the tacklers. He's a tough kid, isn't he? He really is. Uh, Keith, he's an All-American, as you mentioned. He runs the uh, 40 and 4-4. Uh, he'll be high on the list uh, when draft time comes up in the NFL this spring. Alabama trying to reverse that stat from the regular season. They lead in the ball game at the USF and G Sugar Bowl by a score of 13 to 6. Lassick is out of there now, and Sherman Williams, who has scored Alabama's touchdown, is in. He's a speedster. Here goes Parker. Pursuit coming from the back. He can't get there. He's run down by Dexter Siegler. 
Siegler came around the corner and just simply outran Jay Parker to make the tackle short of the goal Number line. 34 is coming from the entire backside. You talk about the speed of Miami. Look at this cornerback just runs him down from behind. It is third down and goal from the one. And Lassick comes back. Well, I tell you, that's like trying to climb a cactus to score against this Miami Keith, crowd, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised to see a run to the left because if they throw it, it'd be very tough to kick a field goal from that right hash. Lassick. Touchdown. We don't need to kick field goals when you can get it into the end zone. The big uglies on the right side gave him a crack. At Stevenson and Patterson, Buskey the tight end. Siegler 34 runs around the block. Good running by Lassick and really some really some shoddy tackling by the Hurricanes. Johnny Howard snaps it. Doctor's kick is up and good. Alabama has scored 14 points off Miami Turtles and lead 20 to 6. Derek Lassick, who put it in the end zone for the tied second touchdown, has 22 carries, 116 yards. In case you wonder, the Sugar Bowl rushing record, Tony Dorsett, 202 yards when Pittsburgh played Georgia here. All the coaches, you ever ask them, what's the key to this game? They'll always tell you, turnovers, turning the ball over. A 20-6 lead as Alabama kicks off to Miami. With Harris and Williams waiting. This will be Williams at the seven. Kevin searching around, finds, finds enough daylight to get the ball out to about the 29-yard line. He's a tough little guy. Here are the scores of games earlier in the day. Tennessee was impressive. So was Notre Dame. And Stanford. And Georgia. Syracuse beat Colorado. Michigan finally won a Rose Bowl after being frustrated for so long. And Florida State is leading Nebraska in the fourth quarter by 20. Curry is back in the lineup. He missed that last series for Alabama. They worked on him some. He's fixed up. He's back. Miami now going to work out of the shotgun from the 29. They're down by 14. And Toretta intercepted by Teague. George Teague to the end zone. Touchdown. Defense wins championships. And Alabama's got the best defense in the country. Well, they are so well prepared, and Dennis Erickson made that point last night when I was talking to him. He said they have had a lot more time to get ready for us than they had to get ready for Florida. Even though we learned something by looking at the Florida tape, we still know that they've had a lot of time to prepare, and it shows. Rockwell's point is good. With 9.56 to play in the third quarter, it is now Alabama 27 and Miami 6. Take a look now. Every one of the red shirts are up there. They're, they're going to blitz or they're going to fake blitz. Here's Teague right here. Now the route is going to be when you when you see blitz, they break it off right in here. Watch as Teague reads the route and breaks inside of Harris, the expected wide receiver. They drop back. They don't blitz. It was a fake. 
Now he, he knows the route better than the receiver. He jammed him, he got in there. That's good film study and good preparation by the University of Alabama. Teague knew what he was doing. This is his first touchdown interception of the year. Time remaining in the third quarter, 27 to six now. Alabama leads Miami. Gino Toretta, two passes in this half, two interceptions, and one Alabama touchdown. Four turnovers leading to a total of 21 Alabama points. And that last play by Teague covered 31 yards on the touchdown return. It's nothing new for uh, Gene Stallings' group. They're fourth in the nation, as I mentioned earlier, in the turnover margin. They're now up to plus 21. Proctor will kick it off. Harrison Williams waits. Williams at the two. Good block trying to get him to the sideline, but the red shirt just won it. Watch the interception again now. From the left side of your screen, number three. This is an interception for Toretta, but it's really the fault of the receiver because he didn't get in there where he was supposed to be. The, re the, the quarterback is expecting the receiver to be in there on a little slant if they're blitzing, and he didn't get in there. The, re the uh, defensive back, Teague, knew where he was going. Yeah, but these receivers are not used to being treated like this either. And it's getting boxed around. Harris is small, and Teague yep. is big and jammed him at the line. Didn't get off right. the line of scrimmage. 12-yard line, and it's Miami's worst starting position of the night for a possession. Hand the ball to Donnell Bennett, and they eat him up. I don't think he got back to the line of scrimmage. So if, if you're a hurricane now, especially if you've got number 13 and your name is Toretta, your confidence has got to be a little bit down. You've thrown three interceptions, and uh, things have not gone well. You're playing the top defense in the country, and uh, this is a long uphill climb. You see Cristobal, the left, uh, the right tackle, is back in the ball game. It'll be second down and about 11. He did lose on that last play. Lemansky Hall is now right in the middle. That says blitz. Passes away, penalty flag down. Lamar Thomas has got it. Lamar Thomas is on his way down the sidelines. George Teague is after him and runs him down. Takes the ball. Takes the ball away from him. Teague's got the ball. And they tackle Teague back at the 12. But you got a penalty flag all the way back up here. At the 11-yard line at the other end of the field, Rogers Redding is talking with the official who threw it. They're walking down the field, and here's the call. Offside, and the offside is against Alabama. The offside is against Alabama. And so all of this flurry of excitement. George Teague is unbelievable. He can chase Lamar Thomas down from that far away. Teague is the man that just intercepted and ran the one in for a touchdown. Plays the ball's coming back. Here's Rodgers ready. They'll take the play. They'll take the penalty. We have offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Three plays second down. So Miami takes the play. Sure. Of course they but it's, take the penalty. But instead of Erickson having a completion way down, maybe a touchdown. This, this is a great throw here. Single coverage outside. Look at this throw. And look at Teague. Thomas is supposed to have some speed. And a great play by Teague, knowing he's behind him, knocked the ball out of his hands, and he takes it away from him. But Miami accepts the penalty. Offsides against Alabama. They keep the football, and uh, this is remarkable play by George Teague is firmly recorded for him to watch when he's 40. If they would have accepted the, not accepted the, they take the penalty because they don't want the play. The play obviously gives the ball over to Alabama. So put the football at the 16-yard line. Gene Stallings is man and horned again. Added second down and five. Both teams kind of wobbling around here. 
as Toretta sets him up. Tide shows blitz. They go cruising in looking for Toretta and Toretta trying to pop out of the middle. Well, maybe they were trying to run a quarterback draw. Let's go back to the previous play. See if there's an offsides. Uh, unless it's the man yeah, close I, down here at the bottom. Uh, maybe his hand. somebody's in the zone. Yeah, there he is right there. He, he may be lined up offsides. Yep. Yeah, it's hard to see anybody offsides. It's, uh, 55. That's uh, it's London. Antonio London. Yeah. He got started a little soon. Got in the neutral zone. What a big downer for Miami, though. You finally hit a play. Your fastest receiver, one of your fastest. You think you got a touchdown, and you end up back inside your own 20 again. And on top of that, uh, just for show, he had the ball taken away from him. Toretta lets it go, intended for Copeland, and Toretta is just buried under the red shirt as he let the pass go, and he misses. It's fourth down. Here's a look at Alabama defensively. They've taken it away four times. They've got 21 points off the turnovers. Miami's only three of eight on third down conversions. And five times Miami has had the ball three plays or less and out. David Palmer now comes back, wait for the punt, and he's going to be standing somewhere around his 45-yard line waiting for the kick. It'll be the fourth point punt of the night by Paul Snyder. Should be pretty good field position. The Palmer will take it. Take off with it. And bring it back to about midfield. And so with 8.01 to go in the third quarter, the Tide leading by 21. They're sitting right in the middle of the field. This is a remarkable fact. I have never heard of such a thing in place so. Well, they've won four championships in the last nine years, and uh, you think they don't use that as a nice recruiting tool? It's going to take some kind of a monumental comeback to make it five, though, which would have been history. Barker gives the ball to the big guy, Martin Houston, and he rumbles for a first down at the Miami 38-yard line. See a little bit of a, a little bit of the zip, a little of the life out of the uh, Hurricanes, uh, Keith. Uh, after Thomas lost that long pass, if he could have got in the end zone, that may have brought it back to him. But uh, yep. Alabama's got it. Well, they were in position where they had no choice because he lost the ball to Teague, and they had to take the penalty, That's which right. put him back inside the twenty. And they lost field position. Yep. Alabama first down. Williams taken down behind the line of scrimmage. Very good penetration by Darren Crine. That's the second play that Darren has made in the second half. The agony of Lamar Thomas. He knows full well how big that previous play was. He is the all-time career reception leader at the University of Miami. 144 catches and 23 of those went for touchdowns. Here's another look. Toretta inside his five-yard line. This could perhaps get Miami back in the ball game. at least give him a boost. This would put him down by only 14. He runs out of gas, gets caught by the defensive back. Derek Lessig carries the ball down to the 40. After the sack, you're looking at third down and sack. 13 yards, third down and 13. Classic with 118 yards. That's the most any player has had this year against the Hurricane defense. The record of 202 yards, certainly reachable, but I don't think you'll see that. back, gets his pass away, pass caught by Lasik at the 41-yard line, and uh, he'll get it back to about the line of scrimmage as Marley, Rowan Marley is 5'8", 200 pounds, redshirt freshman out of Miami, and he is a really quick, tough little guy. 
When you say little, he's only short. He's wide. He'll be playing a lot in the years to come. The Hurricanes have 13 fifth-year seniors on this squad. They'll be moving on. But Dennis Erickson's program's almost in a position of just reloading, isn't it? Well, this will be the last year. All those uh, fifth-year seniors were, dra were recruited by Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Dennis has been there four years. He's recruited four classes. And uh, he has done very well in his recruiting. Since 1987, that program has produced 13 first-round NFL draftees. 13. And that's more than any other school in the nation. We have a dead ball foul. Delay of the game on the offense. Still fourth down. That won't bother them. It's only five yards, and they're in a punting posture anyway, so they'll back them up five, and that'll just give uh, Deal a little more room to angle the ball. Nobody back. Miami late getting out there. Deal knocks it up in the air. Kevin Williams comes up and calls fair catch, and Alabama trying to get to the ball to mark it. We have a collision in the end zone, and Gaston is down. In fact, we've got two of them down. Is that Busky? Looks like it is Busky, the starting tight end. He may have been the... Uh, Number 83. Yeah. Well, he didn't snap. Yep, that's Busky. They ran into each other trying to keep the ball in the field of play. you got a chance here that two very prominent players may have injured themselves. They were trying to get to the football to down it deep in Miami territory, Buskey and Gaston colliding. Gaston is up now, but Buskey is still down and inert. 83 is Buskey. He is the starting tight end. Mm. There was the collision. I don't know. Maybe the helmet hit him in, in the jaw. May have just knocked him out. But Gaston comes off very gingerly, and Buskey is still down. We've got a timeout. They're still uh, taking their time with Buskey, the Alabama tight end. Steve in a collision with Gaston, Willie Gaston, and Gaston came off the field, admittedly rather gingerly, but he's standing on the sidelines now, waiting for some word about his teammate, and it looks like Steve's going to get up. Here's what happened to them. They were trying to get to the football to down it near the goal line, and they had a collision, and... Uh, in the course of that collision, uh, Buskey really took a rap, but he's up. Keith, I know you're uh, going from here on over to Atlanta, and uh, while I've got a chance, uh, I want to congratulate you on receiving the 1993 Al Alonzo, Amos Alonzo Stag Award. It's given by the American Football Coaches Association, one of their most prestigious awards, and. Uh, they don't rarely give that to, uh, don't usually give that award to um, anybody but college football coaches. And uh, we, all of us at ABC, want to thank you, want to congratulate you. And uh, thank, thank you, you for being a friend. And uh, Appreciate that. Thank congratulations. You. Thank you. Ed. That's one of the awards I think that you one can carry around with pride because it's been working with these guys 40 years. And I'm very happy to have the privilege of being with them. Pass is completed out to the 36-yard line, caught by Horace Copeland, and that's going to move the chains for Miami, so they pick up a first down on that passing play. But the third quarter, uh, the world is just, the sky has fallen on it, really. But there's a whole quarter left. But there, there really is. I mean, they're down by three touchdowns, and there's four and a half minutes to play here in another quarter, and Miami does possess the guns but they're going to have to turn it around from the way they played the first yep. two and a half quarters. 
Kevin Williams is on a post pattern and they can't get the ball to him. Alabama picked him up. He had two people with him. Sam Shade and Antonio Langham were running step for step with Kevin Williams. Now when Langham slides to the outside, that means he's got help back to the inside. There you go, 31 Shade and Langham 43, both double covering him. Now, Alabama has been doing a nice job all night in disguising and double covering different people. It's a look at Buskey who was injured on that uh, punt coverage to, uh, down in the end zone. It looks like concussion, doesn't it? Second down and 10. Heat coming, penalty flag thrown. Coleman Bell has the catch. And Bell is inside the 35 and finally wrestled down at the 30. And let's see about that penalty. That might be an offside. Alabama, play stands. Miami's on the Alabama 30. Tomorrow, the NFL playoffs begin on ABC Sports at 12 noon Eastern. First game. Washington at Minnesota. Second game, AFC champion San Diego Chargers at home with the Kansas City Chiefs. That's all tomorrow on ABC Sports. And uh, as they come out of the huddle, a quick word from Jack Arood on Steve Buskey. Well, Keith, good news. As you see behind me, they're taking off the shoulder pads. He may be out for the day, but the doctors have said that he's okay. He just got his neck snap back. And they're just going to ice him down. But that's good news after a scary couple of moments. Shotgun. Toretta lets it go. And the pass is incomplete. The man trying for the interception was Lemansky Hall. Hall, who normally plays outside, has been inside a lot tonight. And he was inside that time. Second down and ten coming up. Hall was a former uh, defensive back, moved to linebacker. Hurricanes have won 29 straight. Their last loss was at Notre Dame. That record is uh, in big time jeopardy here tonight. Alabama will then hold the long winning streak. They came in with 22 in a row. Here they come. Right up the middle. Whoa, my goodness. Eric Turner. Number 11 and number 39, blitzing right up the middle. Huge gaping hole, and he does a nice job, Turner. Turner was fortunate to be at Alabama. He was the, he hurt his knee as a high school senior. He's a true freshman this year. Last year, he hurt his knee, didn't play a lot, and uh, it was only when another Alabama recruit went somewhere else that uh, Turner was able to sign and come to the University of Alabama. Third down and 10 from the Alabama 30 for Miami. Lamar Thomas trying to come inside on that wide receiver screen and Chris Donnelly will have none of it. The junior from Germantown, Tennessee took him down. And the ball is at the 19 yard line. That is the deepest Miami penetration uh, excuse me, at the 24-yard line, that is the deepest Miami penetration of the night. Remember, the two field goals now were 49 and 42. Big ones. It's fourth down and four. You need touchdowns, not field goals. Here. Right. They're all up there. Here they come. Right up the middle again, and that pass is incomplete. There's a penalty flag. And who was it coming up the middle? Teague? I think it was Turner again. Turner? Okay. Same blitz. Same blitz. Worked. But I think somebody got there too soon. Teague is down, hurt on the field. That's... George is back there around the 11-yard line. It's offside against Alabama. And uh, this young man has been a mountain tonight for the tied defense. And he's shaken up. Here again is what uh, Toretta's looking at. Look at all 11 uh, defensive backs up there on the line of scrimmage. He's going to try to get the ball down here, straight down the field. Now, some of the times they come with this in a blitzing situation, and sometimes they drop back off. This time they're coming. Now, watch the man down, and the second man in from the right side. He's open, and Toretta tries to get him the ball, and it's underthrown. I think it may have been deflected. 
or, uh, knocked down by T. Yeah. And that's where George got hurt. It was up a man at the, the top, uh, the top lined up off screen, yep. off sides. Yep. That's Curry. Teague has got an ankle problem, I think. At least that's what it looks like. You've got 3.08 to go in the third quarter, 27 to 6. Alabama has a 21 point lead over the defending national champions. Miami coming in, ranked number one in the nation. Alabama ranked number two. Number three, Florida State was ahead by 20 over Nebraska. Notre Dame beat Texas A&M today, roundly, out of the Cotton Bowl. Next Saturday here on ABC Sports, the Pro Bowlers Tour premieres at 3 Eastern and Pacific. They'll be in Torrance, California for the AC Delco Classic. And then the world's top skaters will be on the ice for a dramatic pairs and dance competition, the Durasoft Colors World Challenge of Champions. All next Saturday here on ABC Sports. So there's Kitty and Peter Carruthers in the picture there. And now George Teague's walking off. George had uh, six interceptions coming into the game tonight uh, before he intercepted that last one and ran into the touchdown. And those other six interceptions coming in, he had no return yardage. So he made up that, for it tonight, didn't he? Didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he, he saved up. up. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Well, it's just the, the Kane offense has just absolutely been beleaguered. They're inside the 20 for the very first time. Yep. Little time this time. Throws it out to Bennett. Bennett runs into three. <laughs> Alabama people over there. Willie Gaston is back in the lineup, number 22. He was involved in that collision with Buskey, but he's shaking it off. Buskey is out of the ball game. He's taking the pads off. Ball is down on the 15-yard line. Second down. And six. Look at that. Seven-yard run. Doesn't mean much with uh, all the turnovers that Miami has had. This is Bennett. Ran right through two tacklers. And uh, moved the ball down close to the 12-yard line. So it looked like they had him back behind the line of scrimmage. Mario Morris... He uh, was the starting inside linebacker tonight, replacing Michael Rogers, who was involved in a traffic accident over the holidays and uh, couldn't play. There's Mario, sophomore from Decatur. Third and two. That's pretty good coverage, isn't it? You got to believe it is. Mm. Tommy Johnson, one more time, sitting on Kevin Williams. Second man in from the right side. He's going to break to the outside right at us. And number 10, Tommy Johnson, who is the nickelback that's played all night, breaks up his fourth pass on the night. He has a sack, a quarterback sack, a forced fumble, and an interception. Pretty busy young man. Fourth down. Incomplete. Coleman Bell was trying to get a hold of it. It was slapped away by Sam Shade, number 31. So Sam makes his second big play of the night. Thomas was back there, and uh, Goldman Bell looked like the man, uh, the most likely target. Another blitz, 39 is Turner. This time the center goes and gets him, and then Gregory is free. That's why he throws it off balance and high, just throwing it up to give his man a shot at it. That's just good coverage. Bell came with a, he, he got the ricochet and almost got it. Tommy Johnson was the man who looked like the, actually got his hands on it. So Johnson makes another play. Johnson again. Yeah, there he is. He's yeah, rivaling better. George Teague now, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Palmer on a reverse. Runs past Darren Smith. And will pick up the first down. He just outran Smith. 
That may be the only time this year that anybody has outrun Darren Smith coming around the corner. David Palmer. Mr. Excitement. From behind the offense, a little fake to uh, Lassick. They try to get the ball to Palmer 10, 12, 15 times a game. They haven't needed it here tonight, but he can fly. And it's first down at, at the 37-yard line. Tripped Lassick, carrying the ball. Never got really started on the play. That will lose a yard or so as we wind down to the end of the third quarter. One minute and 15 seconds to go. 27 to 6. Alabama ahead by 21. There's a look. David Palmer, what he's done tonight, he's rushed for 26. He's only had six yards receiving. They have, have not had to throw it. 37 on kickoff returns. The one punt return set up a field goal. Glenn Milburn, uh, who plays a similar role for Stanford. He had a big ball game today, too. This is Lassick picking his way back to about the line of scrimmage before Darren Krein puts him down. And we go inside a minute to go in the third quarter. And the big crowd of the Superdome is kind of quiet right now. It's Alabama leads by 21. We get word on George Teague that it was just a cramp, a leg cramp. And he should be able to return. I think they might like to just let the clock wind on down here. There'll be one more step. No reason to hurry when you lead by 21 after three. Barker's going to put it up. The pass intended for Wembley is incomplete. He's squawking about it, but gets no call. Clock shows two seconds remaining in the third quarter. So now they'll punt. Number 69, Stevenson, a right guard for Alabama, is coming off the field very tenderly, limping on the right leg. That's Kevin Williams. There's uh, Stevenson right there. Here's Williams now, sitting back there. Brian Deal looks for the snap just inside his own 30. Deal pops it out of there and gets a lot of air under it and runs uh, Williams all the way back to the 17-yard line. Finally gets a little bit of help on the corner. And I'll tell you what, that's pretty good coverage of a punt. The quarter is over. After three, 27 to six, we'll be back after this message and the word from our ABC station. simply says the fourth quarter belongs to us. You see a lot of football teams doing it, but that's Alabama. Their side of the house. Miami, we've seen them do it a couple of times, but uh, if they win this fourth quarter, they better come out with their motor running. They're down by 21. 27 to 6. And they start at the 24-yard line. First down. Loretta gets it off, and the pass, again, there was double coverage. The pass intended for Horace Copeland. Antonio London and Antonio Langham were both there. They had him between them. Very difficult, if not impossible, to complete Defensive the backs have just flat covered the Miami receivers. Yep, they've whipped them. There's Miami in number one versus number two that one loss is number one and they've won the three times they have won they have been ranked number two so they're looking at losing another one when they're ranked number one the history here in the uh, in the Super Bowl has been for number two to win it happened there oh Gino's falling down but throws the ball as he is falling down and they're going to let him have it he tripped as he pulled away from the snap and Florida State has defeated Nebraska 27 to 14. That score is final in the Orange Bowl. After this game, there'll be only one of the bowl games left. That'll be the Peach Bowl in Atlanta. 
right guard, Kip Vickers. Number 78 stepped on Toretta's right foot. Well, that happens a lot. It does. It really does. Is that why you walk funny? Well, no. <laughs> and the reason it happens is not because the quarterback is slow getting away. It is that the guard or the center move before they normally do or take a lar much larger step or move too quickly. Curry puts the heat on. He delivers the ball to Kevin Williams, and they take Williams down right about the 25-yard line. Derek Oden, 56, the key man on the hit. He's another tough guy. This Alabama defense, the starters have only allowed eight touchdowns all year long, and they have scored four touchdowns, the defense has, for Alabama. Twelve games, they've allowed eight touchdowns, and they've scored four. So, net, they've given up nine, uh, four, four touches. Kick is out of there by Snyder. Palmer got it at the 37th, tries to pop between two, and can't do it, and goes down at the 40. You know, as we look at the third quarter numbers here and the domination by Alabama, that people are going to start asking the question, Bob, is this one of the great defensive teams of all time? Well, uh, it certainly is uh, one of the best that I've seen in a long time, but, I, you know, I... You're, you're better judging of that than I have. You've been around this for 40 years. Yeah, but, uh, but you, you know, you go back to the time when they played the one platoon, yeah. there were some great defensive it's, teams back it's then. It's tough to compare teams compare. in different eras. The no. rules change. Yep. Can't do it. That's, uh, that's uh, Lynch carrying the ball there, and he picks up about four yards. A moment now with Jack Aruk. Well, Keith, you know, in order for Alabama to make it to the Sugar Bowl, they had to defeat their SEC rivals and also the ones that won the Eastern Division in this first-ever championship game in Birmingham. Who was that? The Florida Gators. Well, listen to what happened. Shane Matthews called the team in the, in the uh, locker room earlier, wished them well. There were 35 players from Florida watching the game at Florida Field on a big-screen TV. Oh, excellent contact. Florida certainly did a lot better offensively uh, against this Alabama defense than Miami is doing here tonight. Look like Mark Caesar just he just won't knock somebody down. <laughs> it walked him Getting one. Frustrating. <laughs> we have a dead ball foul. Paul Scott. Paul Scott. Caesar within his rights to do what he did. And <laughs> Thebes is really hot. He knows these guys, these officials, too, because he was in the Southwest for so long. That's what happened uh, in the postseason with these Southeastern Conference teams. Now, I walked around for much of this year thinking that the Pac-10 might have been the toughest league mm -hmm. in the country. But right now, you, you, there's no argument. It, it's, this is a, a great barometer, a great judge of uh, the strength of the conferences. Second down and 12. And this is Tarrant Lynch. Backwards. Enough teams get a hold of him and tumble him back. There is one game left to play, as we said a little while ago in the Peach Bowl, as uh, Mississippi State Jackie Sherrill Ball Club plays uh, North Carolina over in Atlanta. The series goes back a ways. A lot of those victories were in the 70s when Alabama was dominating. I think they only played one time. They didn't play it all in the 80s. They played the one game in 90. 90, 1990, Sugar Bowl. Barker throws incomplete, intended for Curtis Brown, and defended by Paul White. White at 5'9", given away about four or five inches on that play, but he made it. And so the Tide will have to give the ball away again on the punt. As we are in the fourth quarter of play, it was the third quarter where the sky really fell on the Hurricanes. It was 13 to 6 at halftime, and Alabama exercising opportunity came up with interceptions that produced 14 points. Kevin Williams on the move will take it. He's still upright. He's still upright. I don't see any flags. Nobody has put a foot down to mark it. 
Touchdown, Miami. Can you believe that? Unbelievable. I thought he was out of bounds over there. I think a lot of people did. But Williams is, as we told you a while ago, you, you reach a hold of him, you think you got him, and uh, all of a sudden you're looking at his pockets going away from him. Well, to get back in this game, the Hurricanes needed some big plays, and they, we mentioned they do have some big play guys. This is 78 yards. This is a Sugar Bowl record. Williams is stopped. Sometimes when that happens, the defensive, the coverage team stops. He does stay in bounds. Now there's nobody to really pursue him. And he canters into the end zone. That's his 27 to 12. First punt return for a touchdown this year. Last year he had three, but really has not shown a lot this year. You know, that sort of reminds me of that UCLA-Nebraska game a few years ago. Remember that? Yep. The fellow rolled over the top of somebody else, got up and walked 40 yards for a touchdown. Threw it for the point. Good. So, 12.08 to go now. 27-13 to 13 ball game. The Chiefs were expected to win the division, but San Diego ran away with the crown. Now these two rivals meet in game two of our playoff doubleheader, Saturday on ABC Sports. Well, the yellow numbers tell you Miami will kick off. It's the first Sugar Bowl touchdown off a punt return in 21 years. Last man to do it was Tim Wiley of the Oklahoma Sooners. David Bernson fetching that out of the history book. And Alabama smells uh, onside here. They've got uh, DBs and receivers up. It's Kevin Williams up there on the kickoff team, too, Keith. Yep. He's the safety. Safety belt. Kick it away. Palmer circles at the five. It's all the way to the 40. I tell you, these two little guys are really something when they get that football and start looking for a hole. Right side of your screen on the bottom there is Sonny Lubick. He is the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, has been for the last four years, and Sonny is moving on uh, to be the head coach of the at Colorado State. Well, he was out there as an assistant. Yes, he so was. He's going yes, back. He was. He likes that lifestyle. Yep. Tommy Tuberville is going to move up and replace him as the defensive coordinator. Uh-huh. I have to talk to Tommy about uh, that big loop and slice he hit across two fairways. Here comes Palmer around the corner, and Michael Barrow is waiting for him and puts him on the ground. Back there were two Canes uh, staying at home, Dexter Siegler, the boundary cornerback, as well as Barrow. Michael Barrow is playing uh, in his 36th straight start. He is playing in his last game also as a Hurricane. He's their leading tackler and in their is, is their inspirational leader. Well, it was his 11th tackle on the night. It's second down and 14. If they hold him right here, Bob, or get a break right here and get another quick touchdown, it'll quicken the pulse a bit, won't it? Just can't have a turnover. Fake reverse. Lassick kept it. Picks his way through the crowd. Big play to midfield. Close to a first down. Actually, if you're Alabama now, Keith, you don't need more points. What you'd really like to do is to uh, drive maybe yep. 10, 12, 15 plays and take some time off the clock. And if you do get some points at the end of it, that'd be great. I tell you, that may be a very big play right here because if uh, on second down and 14, he got him off the hook, got him into a position where they know at least it's third and one. And... Uh, now they can take at least four more snaps. Boy, that's a that's that's a big play. It's a lot of time off the clock. While they bring the chains in, we'll tell you it's a crowd of 76,789. Just a little short. It's 
going to fake this reverse. They're going to fake it to Palmer. Palmer is a marked man. Uh, whenever defenses come in, you see Krein, 91, was influenced by that. I'll tell you what, Lassick and Palmer, the two guys, the two main cogs in this Alabama offense are really something. It's about six inches that they need here on third down. He got it. Barker trying to sneak it. He just bounced off the first try. Armstead was the guy in the bottom. Mm -hmm. Lopez was in there too, number nine, 71 for uh, the Hurricanes. But, you know, how do you, one of the, the linesmen on the side puts his foot down somewhere, and uh, there's no way to get an accurate read, but this is just all part of the game. Short. He needed six inches. He got three. He's, uh, Gene Stalling says go for it. got to think of Bear Bryant right here. You know, he's, he, he talks so much like Bear Bryant. It's, uh, this offense, this whole team is very similar to what uh, Bryant would have, uh, Keith. And you knew him a lot better than anybody else probably, or more like most people. Strong defense and a strong running game. Oh, he got it, but not by a whole bunch. Martin Houston, the bulk of the big fullback, is good for the first down. Right side, that's Johnson, number five, the tight end. Smith, 45, gets a piece of him, and then uh, Barrow just falls off. I'll tell you what uh, Paul Bryant liked. He liked tweeners. Uh-huh. You mean... Uh, guys that were not all Americans yeah. out of high school, yeah. but guys who could play, and guys that were coachable, and people that would spin what they had, and give him what they could afford, and... Well, here's and, one right here uh, in Jay Barcher. Yes, sir. He is a hard worker. A lot of them out there. Yep. This is Lassick. Well, I'm not so sure that Lassick, he had pretty good numbers coming out of Haverstraw, New York, but he was not a world beater. Otherwise, he'd never been able to get south. Somebody would have roped him in. But he shows up, and he's had a terrific senior year. Barrow fighting off the block of Shields. The center gets a part of it, as does Greer. Time remaining in the ball game, nine minutes and 40 seconds, 27 to 13. 14 point deficit. Miami needs to get the ball back and then do something with it. Sherman Williams he is the deep man. They show blitz. Marley does from the outside, takes off. Oh, he got a lick on him, too. And uh, Houston will move the ball to about the 48. You can see Marley almost jumped. He got backed out of that neutral zone and then went after him and got him before he got to the line of scrimmage. Now Palmer and uh, Brown will check into the lineup for Alabama. It's one versus two. Yep. Number two has won the last four games. Lynch is the big man. They pitch it back, however. Oh, look at this. Williams lets it go, and he throws. Oh, that's interference. They ran over Palmer. Three canes down there, and they just ran over him. And it's a 15-yard penalty and a first down. Siegler and Greer and Harris, and I think all three of them got a piece of him. little bit of resignation yeah. there on the face of Dennis Erickson. Well, he didn't have to interfere because the other man coming from the 29 is going to interfere with him, Greer. He doesn't see it, but the, from the left side, right there, Harris would have intercepted the ball. The ball was underthrown. Now watch Palmer, number two, is he's going to have to slow up, come back. He's the only one that sees it. Yeah, he gets mugged by Greer. 
<laughs> that was a pathetic pass that Williams <laughs> made. He just slipped out of his hands. He didn't. He just lost his grip on it. And couldn't spin it at all. But when they're going right, nobody ever asked how, did they? Just how many? First down from the 33, and up to Williams in the middle. Works his way down close to the 25. So they're doing here, I think, Bob, just what you mentioned a while ago, what they want to do. Just hold on to the ball. Yep. Snap the ball and run the clock. Pretty quiet over there on the side where the white shirts are resting. Alabama's rushed for 234 yards. That's an average of 4.5 per carry. Those yardage is is more than Miami's given up all year. Timeout. 7:58 to play in a ball game. 14-point lead, Alabama. Well, it's a night for Roll Tide, and uh, those of you in New Orleans who uh, think you won't be hearing it into the wee hours of the morning, you better be getting on the train and going somewhere else because these folks are going to have a party. 29 consecutive wins coming in here, so the last time they lost a game was October 20, 1990 at Notre Dame. And so some of these uh, young people from Miami don't know the, the, the shock of losing a ball game. Williams carries there and uh, rolls out of bounds to kill the clock. So they'll be looking at short uh, coming up here. Talk about the players of Miami. What about the coach? The coach has uh, only lost three games in uh, the four years that he's been at the university. He is, Erickson is 44 and three. Coming into the game tonight, he's won two titles in three years. Gene Stallings, on the other hand, uh, only has lost six games. In his three years, he's 30 and 6. Yeah, and but both of them have been seasoned. Oh, yes. Third and short. Third and about a yard and up the middle. So Houston keeps on pounding and gets the first down at about the 20-yard line. Well, you went through it with the Miami Dolphins. You guys won that championship 17-0. and 0. Uh, It must have been a shock even at an advanced... Uh, it is. You just career. can't believe you're ever going to lose, Keith. And uh, the Hurricanes this year pulled some games out that uh, were very close. But eventually you have to lose. And uh, the next year we came back and went 15-2 and two and were probably stronger than we were the year before and won another championship. So... Uh, Miami's going to lose a lot of players, as I mentioned. They've got uh, 13 fifth-year seniors on that ball club, but they've got a lot of young players to step up. First down, Alabama, down at the Miami 20, leading 27 to 13, and 7-20 to play in the ball game. And up the middle goes Lynch. Inside the five, first and goal tied. And they're starting to dance in up and east of Boga and Coleman and Montgomery. Just poor tackling and good running. Good blocking by Alabama. Houston doesn't get a chance to carry the ball much. Six is Harris, the free safety. He misses. And uh, Alabama has had it their way. Lynch, excuse me. He's only a sophomore. He's got some time left to grow. Ball just inside the five, first and goal. And time called by Rogers Redding, charged to Alabama with 6.56 to play in a ball game. See some originality in that one, isn't there? Uh-huh. Well, what these Hurricanes have done over the last decade is it's one of the great stories in the history of sport. I don't care what your sport is. They're uh, taking a uh, licking tonight, but well, they've been in the top three of the final AP poll seven straight years. Yep. This is Williams, and Bass grabs a hold of it and rides him out of bounds at about the line of scrimmage. Michigan won today in the Rose Bowl, getting by Washington. Terrific game. The Wolverines have now won 730 games, more than anybody else. 
Notre Dame has 7-11. And if Alabama holds on and wins here tonight, then Alabama and Texas will be tied for third with 682 wins. So that tells you something about what's been going on at Tuscaloosa all through this century. Second down, give it to Lassick. Turns the corner, touchdown. Lassick scores the touchdown, but it's, it's Hammond and Wilson and Johnson and Magnum up front. The guy's doing the blocking. And Lynch, 45, the fullback. And is there any doubt who the national championship uh, champion is? Not in my mind. Classic 28 carries, 135 yards, two touchdowns. Point by Proctor. Good. At 6.46 to play in the game, I think I heard the door slam. 34 to 13, Alabama leads again by 21 points. The Alabama scoring drive reflected there. 12 plays took a lot of time off the clock. Pass interference penalty, though, was the big play. Yeah. Mistake by Miami. And the Alabama Crimson Tide cashed it in. Proctor killed it. Knocked all the air out of it. And Kevin Williams is going to come from four yards deep in the end zone. Now he's going to go the other way. Hoping his picket line is set up over there. He did get a little help out of it. And finally, he steps out of bounds up around the 22, and now penalty flag. <laughs> Alabama man was knocked down, and you got a personal foul going to be called against Miami. Number 40 took a lick, and Mickey Kahn is leaving the field. That's another big penalty that uh, kills momentum. The Infinity Tournament of Champions final round live three Eastern two Central and Pacific on Sunday, January 10 comes from La Costa. All the fellows who had wins on the 1992 tour will be there looking for the first uh, win of the 1993 tour. Ray Floyd is qualified to play in both the regular and the senior tournament divisions of the Tournament of Champions. Does that mean he has to hit it twice? <laughs> no. <laughs> got twice a good chance to win. <laughs> Toretta completes the pass to uh, Donnell Bennett out of the backfield. And they will move Marker up to about the 21, no, to the 18-yard line. Been a long, tough night for Gino Toretta. Brilliant career, 26 and one, about to become 26 and two. One national championship, the Heisman Trophy, the school's most decorated player. But it has been a miserable last game for him. Down the middle, the pass is incomplete, intended for Copeland. Clock shows 6.24 to play in the ball game. Well, you're right about Gino. It's been a tough, uh, tough, tough career. But not for that man right there. Stallings has come in and really turned this program around. And uh, he is a big admirer of uh, Bear well, Bryant. You know what? Uh, you, you look at the guys that followed uh, uh, the Bear, Ray Perkins, Bill Curry. They didn't lose. They didn't have a losing season. 
And they're, they're winning record when they departed the capstone. Uh, they were winning record. But there's more to it than that. Here's a pass to Kevin Williams, and Williams getting to the sideline, stopping the clock, and I don't think he made the marker. They had pulled the marker out of the way, and Kevin didn't know exactly where it was, and I think he pulled up just a little short. Well, they'll bring the chain all the way across the field. So let's summarize for you as to what's happened. There have been four Miami turnovers that have led to 21 Alabama points. Alabama has run the ball very well tonight. Kevin Williams had a pretty good night in all-purpose yards, but Lassick was a bull of a man running from the backfield for Alabama with 135 yards rushing, two touchdowns. And uh, it's other than that, it's been Miami mistakes. Plus the fact that Miami hasn't run a lick. They've gained 11 yards on the ground. No, they haven't. And you've got to be able to run some to keep that rush, the pass rush off, to, to help you uh, throw the football. But do not worry about the future of Miami football as long as Dennis Erickson's around. I do believe that you'll find him to be bouncing back next year with a pretty good football team, even though the losses are going to be really heavy. A lot of people leave it. Well, they lose eight starters off of the offensive team alone, uh, Keith. Well, you got young Walsh over there. And uh, Frank Costa. And Frank Costa is the more seasoned of yep. the quarterbacks. It is fourth down, and mine is going on fourth and one. So he was a little short. And they get it with Donnell Bennett. So that's the first down. There may have been a lot of key plays of the game, but there's always one that breaks your heart, takes away your momentum. This was the second possession of Miami in the second half. Toretta had already had one intercepted on the first possession, and Alabama scored, and this was the second one. Alabama has scored a touchdown off the defense four games in a row. Chris Jones can't reel that pass in. That is incomplete. It There's was a matter of the Miami wide receivers just getting whipped, wasn't it? That's right. Teague is uh, one of the corners. He scores here. And Langham, Antonio Langham, had scored in the three previous games. So of the two cornerbacks for Alabama, they scored a touchdown in the last four games this year. And one of the more remarkable plays of the ball game was made by George Teague and yet doesn't count because of an offside penalty. Well, he actually saved the touchdown. He saved the touchdown. Toretta hits his man down the middle. That's good for a first down. Making the catch is Chris Jones, the sophomore from West Palm Beach. And so let's put the ball at about the 46 and call it first down Miami. Five fifty-one remaining. 21-point lead, 34-13. Toretta throws the ball into the ground to kill the clock. As far as Alabama's concerned, they lose Teague, but Langham, Antonio Langham is back. They lose Copeland and Curry and Antonio London, but uh, Lemansky Hall is back, uh, Sam Shade is back, uh, Nunley is back, Lockett. They'll have some, uh, some guys to work with defensively. And Miami gets Rusty Medeiros back. He just got another year of eligibility. Yes, he did. He was out here yesterday running. ACL reconstruction uh, and uh, outrunning already. They look good, too. Lamar Thomas jumps out of bounds quickly, picks up about five on that play. Here's that play I was talking about a moment ago that Teague made. The pass was complete to Lamar Thomas here, and it looked like for all the world that he was on his way to a touchdown. And it would have been a very dramatic touchdown for Miami to mount a comeback on. But look at this. Teague runs him down. Thomas is one of the fastest guys on the Miami roster. Not Teague only does he <laughs> run him down, but he has the presence of mind to try to knock the ball loose, and he didn't lock it loose. He just stole it. But the play was nullified by an offside penalty. And on top of this pile of humanity down there is big old 94. John Copeland.
I was on the flight after the SEC championship game with uh, uh, Copeland and Curry. They went out to the Bob Hope Show, and uh, we found a way to put them up there where the seats were a little bigger. In Dallas to Los Angeles, and I think they ate everything. <laughs> yeah. For their roommates, Curry and Copeland. They have 39 career sacks between them. And Toretta lets it fly. Kevin Williams cannot run it down. And at 4.51 to play in the game, Toretta walks off and into a, a very disconsolate gathering on the Miami side of the field. Ruth Ann Stallings. John Mark to the left there. Daughters. Nice, close, lovely family. John Mark was the subject of a feature some time ago. One with Down syndrome. Loved by everybody who's known him. Brian Bergdorf checks in as the new quarterback and the principal backup to uh, Jay Barker and timeout at 4.51 to play in the game. One versus two in the Sugar Bowl, 79 and 83. Uh, two beat one in both instances, and it's going to happen here for a third time. Those were not, as you would want to say, consensus. Those were AP polls. That's the one we've used this year. Carrying the ball is Chris Anderson, and Anderson's put down by Darren Smith. But Alabama's going to finish this season with uh, 13 wins. That's the most ever in a single season at, for the university. They have uh, won 10 or more football games 22 times in uh, a single season. No other school has had that many 10-win seasons. They have won 20 Southeastern Conference Championship. And it's kind of like that uh, old-timer said when he called me the other day that we weren't too bad back in the teens and 20s and 30s. Uh -huh. Some people have said this year that Alabama had a soft schedule. And looking at it, uh, five of their 12 opponents up until this game had only only five of 12 had winning records. But as it went on, as it looked like we're getting something ready here for oh. Coach Stallings. <laughs> <laughs> as it went on, they beat uh, the best that... Uh, the SEC had to offer. And the SEC is undefeated in postseason play. Yes, they are. 5-0 and oh so far. And look like they may be headed 6-0 uh, and oh if Mississippi State handles North Carolina. Bergdorf's an option man. And pretty quick comes out of Cedartown, Georgia. And he's pretty close to a first down with that play. Yes, they have uh, mixed the brew now. Or the coach. I hope he wore an elderly coat. <laughs> he won't care. He brought an extra. Lock moves inside of three minutes now. And uh, number 19 there is a freshman quarterback, if you're wondering. Chad Keith. <laughs> he better be pretty accurate. He might be you got that right. Driving the equipment. He, he looked, might be working for he, Tank next He looked year. awful young. <laughs> you feel, you can't help but feel sympathy for uh, what's happened to uh, the Miami team and Gino Toretta tonight. You have to because they've had a very illustrious career. Had a great run. Just caved in on them. Including the Heisman. There's Barker who finishes up. He's 17, 17 straight oh, yep. as a starter. He was 4 of uh, 13 tonight for only 18 yards and had two intercepted. He rushed for 19 yards and passed for 18. So he actually ran for more yardage than he threw for. Deal launched that when Jonathan Harris let it go, and it's down at the five-yard line by Alabama's Tommy Johnson. So... 
when it's going right. Sure does feel good. Tomorrow, NFL playoffs on ABC Sports, 12 noon, doubleheader, Washington at Minnesota and Kansas City at San Diego. Join us here on ABC Sports for the NFL wildcard playoffs. And hasn't Bobby Ross done something out in San Diego? He certainly has. Stan Humphreys will play tomorrow, we're told, for San Diego. How about Dennis Green up in Minnesota? Denny Green, two college coaches, stepped right into the NFL and done a terrific job. And Marty Schottenheimer's done a great job in Kansas City. Yes, right? Two and a half minutes. And a lot of folks have started home already, I'm sure, just to begin the partying. But Donnell Bennett runs it well up the middle and gets a first down across the 20-yard line for Miami. Well, I would imagine by the oh, time... Oh, that's cold there. They're putting ice in the water now. That's oh, really? cold. That's, that's not too nice. I mean, water is bad enough, but ice water. There's Hootie now. Hootie's got a red coat on. That's liable to run. Hootie better be smart and get away from the coach. <laughs> I noticed he's putting his glasses away. They smell something coming here. There's a quick shot to the sideline. The pass is complete to Jonathan Harris. For about six, six yards. Toretta now is, uh, if you're interested, 22 of 49 for 235 yards, but the key number is the three interceptions that were uh, turned into three touchdowns for well, there Alabama. Was a, there was a building story for this Alabama defense as we neared the end of the season, Bob, in three of its last four games. Toretta back. Pass is no good. Incomplete. In three of the last four games, Alabama held LSU to 22 yards rushing. Auburn got 20 yards, and Florida got 30 yards on the ground. So the group was in the foot pretty good. Well, that's for sure, and they led the nation in run defense at Alabama defensively. Uh, Miami has 22 today, including that last run. Yeah. By Bennett. Well, you mentioned earlier, seven of the SEC's all-conference defensive players are on the defense, are on the Alabama defensive team. This is Larry Jones, who has not played tonight. Sophomore out of Gainesville. A big back for the Canes at 235 pounds. And so the young people going to have to step up now and be counted actually on both teams come next season. But it, uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks like the national championship belongs to the Alabama Crimson Tide. Coretta lets it go. Lamar Thomas on the run. Can't pull it down. Pass is incomplete. Executive producer of ABC Sports is Jack O'Hara. Coordinating producer of ABC's college football, Bob Goodrich, who produced today's game. He was directed by Larry Cam. Good job, Larry. Technical director Gary Larkins. Always uh, good job, uh, Gary. Associate producer for college football, Jim Ressler. Associate director David Kiviat. Production manager Arthur Budagian. Technical operations managers Mark Smith and Hal Schmitz. Assistants to the producer Steve Schunk and Paula Coker. Our statistician Dave Bernson. Our spotter Todd Barry. They run the ball with Bennett. No, not Bennett. Jones. And uh, Jones with fresh legs, uh, moving it up near midfield. Our computer stats, Mark Amento. He's got to go to cold Minnesota tomorrow. And our booth coordinator, Paula DeBleek, who goes to cold Minnesota and calls it home. And our sideline coordinator, Dick Shepard. Great job, guys and gals. And Jack Arut is leaving shortly to join the party in East Toboga. <laughs> Lamar Thomas was the target couldn't get it in case you don't know the uh, Talladega racetracks over there in East Dakota and maybe arguably the best chicken fried steak in the world You've been over there huh yes I have <laughs> <laughs> there's the disappointment on the face of the young men of Miami. And a little clip. Jones breaks some tackles. 
And they finally wrestle him down just over midfield. And we're coming up on a minute to play in the football game. And so in the USF and G Sugar Bowl, number two has turned away number one tonight. And the coach of number two is about to get south. Just doused and drenched. That thing is full of water. And I think he knows it's coming. Oh, it's a shock. <laughs> Loretta lets it go. Pass is caught by Chris Jones down inside the 10. And Miami has a chance to put another touchdown on the board. But the frivolity has started on the Alabama side. The celebration has begun. I don't think that uh, Alabama is going to really care a whole lot whether or not Miami puts it in the end zone here. Well, Alabama's defense has not been scored on tonight. The one touchdown Miami did have it was on a punt return. Let's see. Who do you put by? Did you put the big guys back in? No. Some are in there. Langham is in. I see Johnson in. Yeah, a lot of them are back in there. Copeland and Curry are not. This is Larry Jones, and he pounds his way down inside the five. The most valuable player has been named by the uh, media. Miller Digby, most outstanding player ballot, handed to me, says Derek Lassick of Alabama, who had 28 carries for 135 yards and two touchdowns. The time remaining in the ball game, 10 seconds. Pass is incomplete. Well, there's no question that Lassick uh, is deserving uh, for what he has done, but I'll tell you what, there's some players on that Alabama defense that certainly needed some strong consideration. Tommy Johnson, uh, George Teague. Ruthie just can't. <laughs> uh -huh. She's a nice lady. She sure is. <laughs> yeah, you can finally raise that finger and say we're number one. To the corner for Joe. Got it. No, oh, he's out of bounds. Out of bounds. Nice call. Game's over. Alabama defeats Miami. Number two beats number one, 34 to 13. And I'm going to say it for the second time. I do believe Thebes Stallings has succeeded. Now, Jack Aroot with a man who was very prominent in tonight's ball game, George Teague. Well, George, first of all, even though it was called back for an offside, describe how you made that great steal from Thomas. Oh, wow. It was very exciting. I, I thought he was going to score. I had to pick it up a little bit. I was fortunate enough to get my hand in, rip it out, and hold on to it and try to run. And then the key play of the game, absolutely. Take us through the interception. Oh, I've been dreaming of one of those about four years now. Uh, you know, he just having to throw it right to me. They had nobody in front of me. Went in for a score. You know, all year you had to read in the polls, Miami number one, Miami number one. There was one guy in Arizona said that Alabama was number one. How sweet is this victory tonight? I'll tell you what, it's so sweet. If I have five pounds of sugar, I can take it all in right now. I think oh. that says it all, Keith. <laughs> well, they didn't stumble into it. They didn't back into it. They just whipped to Miami, 34 to 13. Keith Jackson, Bob Greasy, Jack Aroot, we hope you enjoyed it.
We wish all of you a happy and prosperous and healthy New Year. Tomorrow, the NFL playoffs begin on ABC Sports. In Game 1, the defending Super Bowl champion Washington Redskins battle the NFC Central champion Minnesota Vikings. Then, division rivals meet as the Kansas City Chiefs tackle the AFC West champion San Diego Chargers. All tomorrow on ABC Sports. Stay tuned for ABC News Nightline later over most of these ABC stations. The USFNG Sugar Bowl. This ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by the Chrysler Corporation. In the car business, you lead, follow, or get out of the way. By UPS, the package delivery company more companies count on. By Hertz, the people's choice in rent-a-car for 75 years. And by McDonald's, what you want is what you get guaranteed at McDonald's today. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television.